the August 19th meeting of the Monona City Council. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alder Groupie? Here. Alder Moore? Here. Alder Kitzler? Here. Alder Wood? Here. Alder Coor? Here. Alder Thomas? Here. Mayor O'Connor? Here. <clears throat> please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the August 5th meeting? So moved. Second. Any corrections or additions? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Minutes are approved. Uh, okay. We will move on to the appearance portion of the meeting. And obviously, we have a lot of people here. Okay, so um, we've also received a lot of emails. So, first of all, I'm going to. Uh, I guess read the uh, from the people who would like to register here and then I will read the people we've received emails from and then we will have the people who are here to speak come after that okay so um, let's see uh, Rochelle Miller 6013 Winnico Road would like to register in favor uh, only of speed bumps at this point she's waiting to see the plan Stephen Milery, 5618 Winnipeg Road, registers against sidewalks. Sarah Smith, 5502 Monona Pass, would like to register in favor of the Bike and Ped Committee recommendations. John Lockwood, 4706 Winnipeg Road, would like to register against the pedestrian plan. Kristen Halverson, for set 4706 Winnipeg Road, uh, register against the pedestrian plan. Samil Greasy, 500 Owen Road would like to register against the ad hoc pen and bike. Deb Seeliger, uh, 6105 Winnicott Road, register against ad hoc pedestrian. Steve Seeliger, 6105 Winnicott Road, register against ad hoc pedestrian. Jan Marshall Fox, 5805 Winnicott Road, register against bike and ped plan. Deb Benson, 4910 Tony Watt the Trail, register in favor of the bike ped plan. Uh, Kelly Unke, 6111, would like to register against uh, the ad hoc report PED safety. Mary Lynn Kretschmar, 6004 Winnicott Road, would like to register against sidewalks. Susan Flynn, uh, 6209 Winnicott, register against uh, sidewalks, bike, uh, sidewalk bike trail, maybe Winnicott Road. Michael Paulus, 6111 Winnicott Road, register against pedestrian bicycle improvement plan. Cole Jolly, 6210 Winnicott Road, register against parking and All of the line changes or whatever. Um, Bill Lee, 6207 Winnicott Road, uh, register against pedestrian and bike improvements. Carell Collette Lee, 6207 Winnicott Road, register against pedestrian and bicycle improvements. Uh, Tina and Mike Godfrey, 6216 Winnicott Road, uh, register against Winnicott Redo Bike Ped. Fred Hyde, 5502 Winnicott Road, register against Winnicott Road Project. Charles Martin, 6107 Winnicott Road, register against the bed, Ped Bike Plan. Okay, so don't okay. those. Then we got a lot of emails. Uh, okay, um, and this is since our last council meeting. Um, people who sent us, uh, we've got a lot of other emails as well, but people who sent us their opinion about the plan. So Brian Mink, 1207 Birchhaven Circle, supports sidewalks and other uh, improvements, um, and also had some other suggestions for South Winnequa. Ann Schrader, 4909 Rothman Place supports the bike ped plan. Mary Posine, 4509 Midmore Road supports the bike pedestrian plan. 
Richard Navratil, 411 Frostwoods Road, uh, is against the deforestation of Monona to make way for sidewalks. Melissa Zietz, 1411 Joyce Road, supports the bike pedestrian plan. Lindsay Wood Davis, 4708 Roygan Terrace, supports the pedestrian bicycle plan. Sukar, 4209 Winnipeg Road, supports the pedestrian bicycle plan. Aaron Monroe Nye, 209 Femrite Drive, supports the plan. Amelia Spate, 4209 Winnicott Road, supports the plan. Merritt Singleton, 6003 Queensway, supports the plan. Sharon Lair, 5801 Winnicott Road, uh, wrote us with questions about who would be responsible for sidewalks and some other questions about city surveys. Olivia Schrader, 5008 Midmore Road, supports the plan. Marsha Janata, 5307 Winnicott Road, had questions about how sidewalks might impact potential landscaping she's doing. Laura Hartog, 4710 Winnicott, Tony Want the Trail, supports the plan. Carrie Nemesai, 4706 McKenna Road, supports the plan. Eric Mueller, 6003 Queensway, supports the plan. Kathy Bernards, uh, 5104 Midmore Road, does not support the plan. Laura Bjork, 5008 McKenna Road, has concerns about safety on various city streets. Um, would like to widen South Winnicott. <coughs> Zachary Barber, 4904 Winnicott Road, supports the plan. Claire Galing, 6110 Winnicott Road, supports the plan. Jesse Claringbowl, 4711 Winnicott Road, supports the plan. Adam Miller, 709 Moigara Road, supports the plan. Mary Hulsbeck, 4801 Rothman Place is concerned with safety uh, walking and biking in Monona, but has questions about some aspects of the plan. Michael Basarich, 4907 McKenna Road, supports the plan. Kevin Bjork, 5008 McKenna Road, uh, raised a variety of concerns about ped bike safety in Monona. He would like more done with designing uh, lanes on roads rather than sidewalks. Jillian Fink, 6307 Westgate Road, supports the plan. Rose Evil, 4507 Wallace Avenue, supports the plan. Gerald Bear, 5300 Midmore Road, supports the plan. Deborah Bear, 5300 Midmore Road, supports the plan. Tim Hamaker, 5706 Bridge Road, does not want sidewalks. Chad Spate, 3905 Monona Drive, supports the plan. Peter McKeever and Marina Kale, 6302 Southern Circle, support the plan. Doug Paul, 4418 Oak Court, supports the plan. Uh, Jacob Smith, 6113 Winnequa, supports the need for the plan, would like us to weigh all options. So those are all the emails we've received. Uh, there is one more. Oh, this is a speaking. That's all right. Uh, Marsha Janata would like to register against the plan, 5307 Winnicott Road. So obviously, if you did send us an email but also want to speak, that's fine. There's several people who did that. So here, these are all speakers. Okay. All right, Peter Carnes, um, 4811 Gordon, did you want, you said you want to speak, but I'm not sure about what, I'm assuming the plan. Okay, uh, well, first of all, I have, we've got a couple of okay. rules here also. Let me find where I put them. <laughs> Thank you. Another speak. Um, first of all, we are limiting uh, comments to three minutes. We would um, appreciate if no negative remarks were made about council members or anyone else who is speaking here tonight. Um, I can, oh, here they are. Too much paper here. Uh, we would ap um, appreciate if there was no show of clapping or yelling or anything after speakers are finished. And according to our rules, the council will be listening to your comments, but we will not be getting into a dialogue with the speakers. So, okay, Mr. Carnes, so if you could state your name and address. Okay, 4811 Gordon Avenue, uh, Peter okay. Carnes. Yeah, I don't live on Winnequa, and I'm not affected by the sidewalks. I'm here only as a concerned citizen. Monona has a long history of people getting along on public streets, whether it be vehicles, pedestrians, runners, dog walkers, um, baby strollers, bicyclists. I grew up in Monona when Monona was 11,000 plus citizens. Now Monona has 7,000 plus citizens. 
that, that's largely because in the post-World War II era, many of the families had six to 12 kids, classmates of mine. Monona has shrunk by 30, 33%. It's the same number of square miles, but less people, especially less elementary to high school kids. I walked to school for 11 years from second grade through Monona Grove High School. My classmates and I walked responsibly. We never had any problem. The most dangerous part of 11 years of walking was crossing Monona Drive for four years. All your studies do nothing for this hazard. When the new high school was built approximately 20 years ago uh, on the site of the high school that I received a good education, ideally there should have been a pedestrian overpass. I'm guessing the best place would be between the high school and the parking lot where the church is. In that era there was a couple of buildings, but now it could still be built. Um, if you did that, it would connect with Lofty, and Lofty connects with one Gordon, two Wallace, and with a slight jog, Shore Acres, and Schofield, three and four. Four north-south streets uh, would be safely connected to the high school. All four go south to Dean, and three of the four go south to Nichols. Now on the, on the Winnequa thing, Winnequa between Bridge and Maywood is a mess. It's largely a mess. When, when, you know, it's not when there's cars, not when there's pedestrians, not baby strollers, but it's really bad when there's bicyclists. You know, you know, God bless the bicyclists, but when they're running too, too wide and they're not using the bicycle lanes, they're out on the street, you know, that's bad. And then it's also bad on the hill between Healy and Maywood. Is a way to alleviate part of the problem, particularly at the intersection of Winnequa and Bridge, could we build a, a um, bridge somewhere in the Graham area between um, Graham and across the, the channel there? across the channel because aren't most of the bicyclists coming from that lake route and would they then just avoid that whole intersection? Was that discussed in, in all of these meetings and the uh, citizen advisory board and, and all that? Is that is that a worthwhile, I, I'd appreciate if somebody would comment, you know, at, you know, after all the others, is that a worthwhile suggestion or am I just totally nuts? But I'm, I'm thinking that you could take, you know, 80 percent of the bicyclists off the you know, off of that intersection and just get them across and then they could go through my own way and go, you know, by the Sheraton and et cetera. Okay, thank you much. Thank you. Uh, next up is Kathy Carr, who would like to speak in favor of a 20 mile an hour speed limit. Oh, and I guess you also filled out another sheet about proliferation of sidewalks so, on two topics. Sorry about these. Madam Mayor, members of the council, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I, I'm registering, or not, I'm speaking against any plan calling for the proliferation of sidewalks in Monona and for a 20 mile per hour speed limit for Winnequa Road from Monona Drive through to Bridge Road and also for both segments of Tonya Watha Trail. That limit to be strictly enforced this could be quickly implemented at little cost to the city. This past weekend for me was a study in contrast. On Saturday, we had the celebration, quote, honoring the city of Monona's Native American heritage. It was about natural beauty and traditions, heritage, and respecting all of this. After all, Monona means beautiful in the Indian language, as my lovely neighbor, Jeannie Heinem, would often say at these meetings. Then afterwards, I read the mayor's words in the Herald Independent. It's, i.e., South Winnicott Road, not good enough for our community, unquote. Well, the redo of that road may have been botched back in the day. By the way, whose bright idea were those bump outs? But it is a beautiful road. Would removing trees and adding sidewalks on both sides make it, quote, good enough for the community, unquote? I might add for our already flood-prone community, we need to move to less, not more, impermeable surface in the city. Monona has to dare to be different, like Fox Point is different from Milwaukee realize what we have here and vow to protect it. And just one other thing, elevated intersections or elevated whatever 
on this main ambulance route to Madison hospitals. Not a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, uh, Tom Thompson, who would like to speak against, and Kelly Unke is giving you her three minutes. And Tom, please give us your name and address. Tom Thompson, 5705 Winnequa Road. For the past few weeks, I have met several people who would go along with my one-way plan <coughs> for South Winnequa Road, as long as it would give us a chance of stopping the existing proposed plan. <coughs> The reasons for being opposed to the plan were many, from environmental to historical to architectural to speed of traffic. I'm sure you've heard them all. I know you've heard many of them from me. One of the statements that I've been had thrown at me is, you, are, you do realize that Winnequa Road is a collection road, right? Well, my answer is no, I didn't realize that, nor did I know what a collector road was. So, so I decided to find out what a collector road is. Wikipedia tells me that a collector road is a distributor road, is, is a low to moderate capacity road by definition, which serves to move traffic from local streets to arterial roads. Unlike arterials, collector roads are designed to provide access to residential properties. An arterial road or arterial thoroughfare is a high capacity urban road. The primary function of an arterial road is to deliver traffic from the collector roads to the freeways or expressways and between urban centers at the highest level of service available. After seeing those definitions, I realized that why everyone I talk to is against the plan is they want Winnequa Road to stay a collector road. As I see it, your proposal is going to convert South Winnequa Road to an arterial road. You're going to increase the traffic flow. You're going to increase the speed of traffic. You're going to funnel extra traffic down through my corner of Bridge Road and Broadway that I think we haven't seen what kind of a mess that's going to be. I urge you to consider redoing a plan that would make it less convenient to be using South Winnequa Road. Whatever choice and use you do, we all agree that safety is important, but part of it is the traffic count. I've been told <coughs> that 4,000 cars a day go by our house. And thinking about it, DOT says maybe 4,000 cars are on Winnequa Road a day on the average. I know a lot of cars that are on North Winnequa Road that never see South Winnequa Road. Most of us that live on South Winnequa Road can't imagine how you could average 200 cars an hour for 20 hours. We can't imagine that 4,000 count, unless you're talking 4th of July, of course. And if they're building that into the average, that's totally unfair. So my argument is, whatever plan we use, let's make it so people do not use Winnequa Road to get from their homes to the Beltline. We have arteries, we have arterial roads. You can, I, and by the way, I've been doing this now ever since my first argument to test it for myself going to Frostwood up to Winnequa or up to Monona Drive and out to the Beltline turns out to be one heck of a lot more efficient and turns out to be not that much longer but faster time-wise. Now again, it depends on stoplights and the traffic jams. You're not going to want to go anywhere during rush hour in the afternoon. You're definitely not going to want to be on Broadway. You're not going to be wanting to come up Bridge Road at that time of day especially when we have all the new residences in our new development. So again, I urge you to consider 
making a plan that will make it less convenient to use Winnequa Road. One other note, I uh, go to my brother-in-law's down in Cottage Grove. I pop onto his road from Cottage Grove Road to Gaston Road. Every intersection is a four-way stop. Now, you could pick up a lot of money if you wanted to catch me making a full stop or a rolling stop at the four-way stops. But I'll tell you, nobody worries about anybody speeding or any safety factors walking on the road. It's inconvenient as hell in driving, but you just, if you want to go there, you don't use it as a pass-through. You use it to get to the location you're going to, not as a way of getting over to Gaston Road. So my suggestion is, think about these alternatives to make South Winnicaw Road safer. We all want it to be safer, and we agree with that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Randall Smith, who would like to speak against the bike ped plan until additions are made. <clears throat> all right. Um, so Could current, you state your name and oh, address, please? Randall, yeah, you just said um, Randall Smith. I live on 4224 North Winnequa, um, just right across from Stonebridge Park. And um, currently, I'm <coughs> against the plan. There's an awesome amount of really good information in here. Um, a lot of good work went into it. I just don't believe that it's a complete plan because it um, <coughs> went directly to certain conclusions that um, I think a, a plan like this shouldn't do the engineering. It should be much more all-encompassing and cover all of the options that are available. Um, some of the things that are missing um, are um, traffic flow. We look at traffic flow. Um, I've lived in Chicago. I've you know, been in a variety of different neighborhoods. And one of the key things to traffic flow are um, you know, the size of the road. If you make the road bigger, just like the <coughs> river, you're going to get a lot more flow through that. If we do these improvements um, and just encourage traffic to go that way, the numbers will go up. Um, we have a lot of people traveling into one choked area. and that in and of itself is a problem on a, a connecting road. Um, we want to <clears throat> do means to get traffic away from the high density areas. Um, and one of the things that is not mentioned in the report <coughs> any place um, is options of changing from two way on every single street in Monona except um, Stonebridge to um, going to one way options. Um, they should be included in the report. Um, so that um, future people <coughs> looking at it know that that is something that could be evaluated. If it's not in the report, they're not even going to look at it. Um, some other things that should be included in the report is all attempts should be made to uh, save all the trees that we have. Um, the engineering associated of sidewalks do get put in. Um, should heavily take into account the um, you know, just the trees that are present. And the architecture shouldn't just be like, okay, let's just clear cut this. And, um, you know, that some of that should be included in the report. Um, some other things, um, you know, although the report shouldn't specifically state, um, in my mind anyway, the hierarchy of events, um, it seems to bypass one of the biggest problems that are out there right now is Monona Drive. Um, and, you know, stuff that basically happens up by the high school and up and down uh, Monona Drive. The way that the bike path got put in there, sorry, but it's, it's very narrow and, you know, um, to me was uh, not done very well. Uh, a couple other comments associated in here. Um, parking bays are mentioned in all of the different options. And um, to me, it should be mentioned in there that um, if you do put parking bays in uh, anywhere on Winnequa Road, that's gonna put a um, burden on a few homeowners as compared to everyone. Parking bays just, to me, should just be taken out of the um, equation in this report because um, I just don't see, you know, I just was walking by it just uh, to the east of Java Cat they have parking bays which are right in front of um, apartment buildings. Um, in front of apartment buildings it might work, 
um, but in front of individual okay, sir, homeowners. Okay, so your three minutes are up. Um, I do not think it would work. So with those changes, I think, you know, a lot of good work was done. Um, it's just not complete yet. Thank you. Logan Windry, Windry um, would like to speak against. <coughs> Logan Wandry, uh, I live in uh, 6217 Winnequa. So, I mean, with the amount of people that are in the room, it's obviously a contentious topic. And I think that there's obviously some type of change that's needed. My uh, opposition is it doesn't feel like we've actually looked at all of those options. Uh, a one way seems like it would end up potentially working. I think right now is actually an ideal time with the work being done on Bridge Road. I think being able to potentially put such a contentious issue to more of a referendum uh, would end up kind of at least showing actual numbers of support. It's one thing hearing the number of people that end up supporting and not supporting. There's all sorts of petitions going around. Most of them are going to be the same people across you know, five different petitions that I've signed myself. So I think having a referendum to truly understand um, what the community wants and, and be able to kind of look at that would be very, very, very helpful. One of my biggest uh, points of contention with you know, this whole process starts with the banning of parking. The Public's Work Committee ended up not having a single supporting vote when they ended up voting on that. And this council ended up uh, ignoring their vote for that parking ban. And this is just a continuation of that. I'd like but to correct you, that was not true. I was at the meeting. I was at the meeting too, and there were some. There was a public works committee meeting. There was one abstention, okay. um, and they did not support, um, mostly because they didn't receive uh, the information from uh, the ad hoc bike committee. Um, there was meeting minutes and different reports and things, and at the meeting I had when they ended up voting, not a single vote. Um, in fact, there was an alder woman, I believe, there that ended up saying that it was bad government because they didn't get the information uh, from the bike committee uh, on the time. Uh, to, to end up making the vote, and this happened right before the committee ended up voting. It was like a week or two before that, um, uh, that committee meeting. So to me, that's not necessarily responsive, and that is the, the frustrating part of it. There's a lot of dissent on kind of putting up uh, sidewalks, tearing down trees, tearing down historical walls, and all sorts of negative impacts that haven't truly been assessed. When, we, that, uh, when I received the letter on the banning the, uh, um, the parking on Winnequa, the letter stated that there was going to you know, study the impact. When we, people came to speak, there was no study planned. To my knowledge, there was no study that ended up looking at what that impact was. It was just a predetermined decision and an outcome that we're going to ban parking due to safety concerns. So that's very, very frustrating. Language matters. And I feel lied to that the city said, we're going to end up you know, studying this. And no study happened after that uh, parking ban went into place. So those are kind of my comments. Um, I, I uh, you know, really urge this council to end up listening to the people, listening to the dissent, and finding out through a referendum whether or not there is, truly is a majority support versus a minority uh, support for whatever change ends up needing to happen. And like others have said, I think speed is a problem. I would support a reduction in speed to the 20 miles an hour. I would support the one way. There's lots of things that I think could potentially be solutions where everybody that lives in the area in Monona can end up getting behind. I just don't think the plan as it gets is being put out has the support. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next up is Mike Coor. Good evening, I'm Mike Coor. I live at 6103 Queensway. Um, I'm an owner resident, a small business owner here in town. I have two daughters under the age of 12 who are avid bikers. I also have a black lab at home who enjoys walking in the evening. We cover a lot of ground in and around the town. I'm here to express my support for the Monona Pedestrian Bicycle Improvements Plan. At first glance, it's obvious that a lot of thought, time, and energy has been put into preparing this plan. I'd like to commend the city leaders and all those involved for taking this collaborative approach to identifying problems and offering solutions in our community. Biking with kids is not easy. It's full stress and second guessing 
can be difficult for kids at times to understand who has the right of way at some of our intersections. Uh, but getting through some of these challenges often leads to that much loved park or the pool or the library. Having spent much of my own youth on two wheels, I would not want my kids to miss out on the joy and the sense of freedom that comes from riding a bike in and around town. Uh, while out riding, I've noticed some improvements in our streets already. The new dedicated bike lanes on Frostwoods Road and Bridge Road have given my kids confidence in knowing that there's a space for them on those streets. Uh, as a parent, it gives me peace of mind and it gives me more time to help them focus on riding in a straight, predictable path while watching for potential hazards up ahead. This plan lays out some difficult choices ahead. Decisions between the proposed options on future projects will require finding a balance between what's feasible, both financially and physically, and what's in the best interest of keeping the public safe in our traffic corridors. By accepting this plan and using it as a guide, you will be showing your commitment to making Monona an even better place to live, work, and play. As you start to implement the plan and make some of these choices, I ask that you keep Monona's children in mind. They are the ones who will have to navigate through our decisions in the decades ahead. I thank you for your time and for your commitment to public service. Thank you. Uh, next is Kim Gorishans, who would like to speak against. And while she's on her way up, um, we also have another uh, registration against from Shirley Robinson, 5202 Winnicott Road. I'm Kim Gorshana, is at 6217 Winnequa Road. Me and my son Max are here to speak against. Um, I'm definitely not as prepared as all my other neighbors. We forgot about this and found out 15 minutes ahead of time. But anyways, um, I kind of feel the plan is rushed. Um, there's so many points. I echo a lot of sentiments that everyone's been speaking about when they've been speaking against it. Um, one of them is the environmental factors. If the more impervious uh, pavement that we put on is going to lead to more runoff into the lakes. People are inevitably going to put salt on the sidewalks. And where is that going to go? What's the plan for that? Um, that's a huge thing. Plus, just taking down any trees, the impact of construction would have on existing trees that wouldn't get taken down. I'm sorry, but that's dear to my heart. Um, my son has cerebral palsy. He rides his bike. He uses his walker. He walks on the street. I understand safety is an issue for kids, but we feel confident in letting him use Winnequa, and he does it all the time. He goes up and down to neighbors' houses. Um, I just think we should put, think about, slow down the process, think about other options that won't involve so much destruction of green space, um, and also widening roads. There's so much, I think you guys are from Strand. I don't know if you know, but Widening roads is going to increase the perception of I have the room, I can speed, there's no hazards. It's just, it's just true. Um, speaking about bicycles, Philadelphia, which is a very historical city, has a lot of small little area, little roads that they can't, they can't bring plows through because it's, it's just the way the, the infrastructure is in the city. They have so many bicyclists there, but it's not conducive to bicycling. There's no bike lanes, like, well, there are, but for the most part, getting around the city is, it's not as, like, buffered and, oh, I have my own special lane, but yet they have such a high amount of people using bicyclists or bi bikes. Um, so I just would like to, for us to consider that we, Sorry, I'm really bad at speaking in public. <laughs> um, I want us to slow down, think about the impacts, and I don't know if we've been really doing that, and we, I don't think we've really heard a lot from the neighbors and the public, and I think we should do that, which is what we're doing here. So thank you very much. Do you want to say anything? Okay. Oh. So 
So Max just wanted to say, you know, you're destroying, would potentially be destroying trees, destroying gardens, and that's a lot of the appeal of why people come to Monona. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Sonny Schubert, who would like to speak against. Sonny Schubert, 6107 Winnequai Road. Uh, I've been here before. I'll be here again. Uh, we, we started a petition drive last week to ask you to reject this, and I collected 34 paper signatures, and I'll let Kurt Stute tell you about his online petition, but uh, we find this report to be seriously flawed, and... Uh, among its many cherry-picked, generic, non-Monona-specific statistics is one that says that half as many kids wake, bike, <laughs> or walk to school today as did in 1969. The implication is if we had sidewalks, more kids would walk or bike. I remember 1969. I was there. <laughs> Let me tell you a few more differences. In 1969, most households only had one car. Today, most households have two cars. It's easier for parents to drive their kids to and from school. In 1969, more than twice as many homes had stay-at-home moms than today. Kids today are far more likely to go to a child care provider or after-school enrichment program than in 1969. Children's activities that did not exist in 1969 include swim teams, soccer, baseball, basketball, and volleyball clubs, indoor tennis arenas, Chinese and Russian language lessons, Irish dance lessons, and Taekwondo. <laughs> in Thank 1969, you. if you took music lessons, it was probably piano. Today's kids play a variety of instruments, many of which are not portable on foot or bike. I once gave a kid a ride home who was trying to carry a bassoon on his bike in the rain. Bassoons did not exist in 1969. <laughs> Neither did helicopter parents who, rightly or wrongly, are much more protective than they were in 1969. Therefore, less likely to let their kids wake, walk or bike home alone. You know what did exist in Monona in 1969? A middle school. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grades are prime bike riding ages, yet I imagine few parents today let their kids ride or walk to Cottage Grove. But one thing the Monona of 1969 and today's Monona have in common is big trees and no sidewalks. Let's keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Tim Casper, who would like to speak in favor. <coughs> Tim Casper, 5711 Winnequa Road. Uh, I'm not very popular with my neighbors right now because I do want sidewalks in Monona and I want them on Winnequa Road. Um, but I have listened to Mr. Thompson down there and I think that, that we need to pump the brakes on this a little bit and give us some more thought to uh, maybe making uh, Winnequa Road one way south going from Maywood down to Bridge Road. That would leave enough room for um, a sidewalk a terrace, two bike lanes, and one one vehicle lane. Um, the thought against that is that um, is that we create a one way going one way, and what do we do going the other way? Well, I've driven that at Mr. Thompson's suggestion several times, and going up Bridge Road is just as easy as for me as uh, going down Winnequa. Um, so I I firmly would ask the council to spend a little more time looking at this, look at that plan. It saves trees, it would be cheaper, and we'd get sidewalks and it would be safer. Um, I, I just think that if one, that the problem here is there's too much proximity of too many people being funneled into a small area. You cannot put a uh, two-ton vehicle 
even if it's going 20 miles an hour next to a kid or a bike, and if they collide, the kid or the bike is gonna lose. Um, so I just ask you to put the brakes on it, maybe take some time to study this, and uh, let's take a little more look at what I am for sidewalks. Thank you. Uh, Lindsay Miller, who would like to speak against but register in favor? Lindsay? No speaking. Oh, so you're just registering in favor? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. 709 Margara Road. Uh, Nikki Stute, who's giving her time to Kurt Stute. Kurt, you here? Hi, Kurt Stute, 6003 Winnequa Road. Um, I want to say thank you to uh, Alders Thomas, Corr, and Wood, who uh, responded to a letter that I sent to the, the City Council and all took time to talk to me uh, about the letter and the contents of it, so I really appreciate that. Um, I did note that the plan on the website was revised on last Friday. Uh, I couldn't find anything indicating exactly what was changed, um, which I thought was a little disturbing. I think it was some headings and a couple of uh, graphic numbers were incorrect. Okay. I mean, I, the, the number of like 2.3.6 should have been 2.3.5. Okay. And it looked like the last two pages uh, with the Appendix A was, was an updated Appendix A, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. And I think we had talked about that. Um, so when I read this plan, I'm concerned about trees. Um, many of our neighbors agree. Uh, we had a hastily organized petition drive, and we gathered a total of 163 signatures. Um, and that, I think there were other people who also did sing, uh, a petition drive. Um, the signatures we had, I, I gave you the online ones, which is approximately 82 of them. Um, if you're interested in seeing the other written ones, I was not able to make copies of them before here, so I would like to be, make copies of them before I would turn them in. Um, and that was over the course of four days only. Um, the group of people who were opposed to um, the plan as it's, currently set up that would, um, that would promote a large number of sidewalks and cutting down a huge number of trees included signatories from uh, at least 30 different roads throughout Monona and that included uh, many roads that are not uh, slated to get sidewalks in this, uh, in this plan. Um, the petition's all about asking the ad hoc committee to find ways to improve the per perception of pedestrian safety without defaulting to sidewalks, which is what it currently does. And then, as a result, cutting down hundreds of trees throughout Monona. Right now, the plan, if you look at the line items in the back of the plan, there are 32 different sidewalk or path uh, projects that are recommended by the plan. Um, a total of 25 different projects, but the, the line items break down and there's a total of tw uh, 32 in there that have money um, potentially set aside as a recommended sidewalk or path. Um, some of those make sense. A lot of them aren't necessary. Um, the data in the plan shows that people in Monona are much more concerned about speed of traffic than the lack of sidewalks. Um, in the Safe Routes to School survey on pages 12 and 13, the speed of traffic was the number two factor for not walking or biking. Sidewalks were number five. Sidewalks were less than 20% of, uh, of the reason given as to um, why people are not allowing their children to um, walk to school. Also, if you look at the gap analysis on page 11, the sidewalk system ranks the lowest in importance of the 10 uh, priorities that were floated out there. Um, so sidewalks themselves are not the priority. Safety is, but sidewalks themselves are not. Um, and yet, when you get to section 7.1, the engineering recommendations, next steps, the top three recommendations are all about new sidewalk projects. Only recommendation six discusses slowing motor vehicles. Um, speed calming measures are much cheaper and easier than major infrastructure projects like sidewalks. Um, we could petition the DOT to reduce speed limits on key roads to 20 miles an hour. Uh, we can install speed tables. We can install, install community roundabouts. We can install speed monitors. Uh, we can install stop signs at intersections. We can do better enforcement. There's lots of things we can do to slow the speeds. And in a lot of cases, the recommendations are different if the average speed on that, on that road is slower. 
You can look at, all the, at the various uh, graphs in there as to how they break down the, break down the roads. There's also other projects that aren't, uh, that aren't considered that really could be useful. Things like removing the bump out, well, this is considered, but things we could do right away, like removing the bump outs, that's our number one safety thing. That's what's forcing uh, bicycle, bicyclists out into traffic and creating the, the biggest perception of, of safety hazard um, of anything that's currently on that specific uh, South Winnipeg Road. Although this is way bigger than just South Winnipeg, it's the whole of Monona. Um, I do understand that the council is only voting to accept the plan tonight and not approve it, and I know that's important, but accepting the plan is more than just acknowledging its receipt. Once you accept this plan, this becomes the outline for the city's intended actions going forward. You know, it doesn't approve anything, but and there's good and necessary recommendations in the plan, but it needs to be fixed to honor the community's stated commitment of environmental consciousness. We do have a need to make changes to improve the community's perception of safety to increase pedestrian traffic. We can make improvements in a mindful, environmentally friendly way. We do not need to shoehorn in perfectly engineered solutions without regard to the environmental damage and unintended consequences that they create. We don't have a safety crisis. In the five year span for which data is available from 2011 to 2015, there were a total of nine pedestrian crashes. Two of those were in areas covered by this plan. The rest are in Monona Drive Broadway. Of those two, one is at Bridge Road, Winnequa intersection, which is currently being redone, and the other is on a road, a very light uh, residential road that would not get a sidewalk under this plan. Send this plan back to committee. It doesn't have to take long. Modify the first objective on page four to read, provide safe pedestrian routes instead of provide off-street pedestrian routes. Add an objective to protect the environment and honor Monona's commitment as a tree city. And Sorry, our long your history of time is up, Mr. Stute. Your six minutes are up. Okay. Thank you. So I, I just want to say I appreciate the hard work of the committee. I think they got locked in on blinders on one item. Send it back. It doesn't have to take long. Thank you. Uh, next up, Seal Ishitora would like to speak against. CL Ishatova, 4704 Winnequa Road. Um, we live on the north part of Winnequa, and um, I, I don't think that the statistics are correct. Um, I've been retired for over two years, and so I'm around a lot, and I would not live here if I had thousands of vehicles or thousands of bicycles per day. Um, it felt sloppy to me. Um, I appreciate that there was a lot of work done on this plan, but it did not reflect an environmental consciousness at all. Um, I feel like it's, they're not two separate things because if we're talking about sustainability, um, we need something called climate street guidelines that really take into account the environment. And I'm really here about the trees. Um, I'm also here about I agree with a lot of what people said, that there were concepts that were missing in the report, including the idea that you can make a street safer by making it slower, um, narrower, tighter curves, a variety of fixed objects, um, that it would feel dangerous to drive fast, as opposed to the solution is, as someone said, more concrete, which is impermeable, tearing down trees, and I really don't trust the, there was something written somewhere, I don't know if it was in the report or in your letter, but it said many of the trees are diseased. Well, we have six very old oak trees and they have something, but they're alive. <laughs> you know, I'm diseased, you know. <laughs> I, I think that it felt like a solution, it felt like the solution was sidewalks and then everything was meant to draw that. And I just wanted to ask one more thing, that um, people were talking about um, safety, but I also think that there's a safety in having, having trees. We're in a global 
climate crisis. And you're talking about taking away the very things that give us clean air, especially you're building all this infrastructure. The trees are absolutely what we need for our environment. Um, so I would like to see more of that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Matt Galing, who would like to speak and register in favor of the plan. Uh, Matt Galing, 6110 Winnequa Road. Uh, this is my first time here, so I also don't have notes. Um, but we live on South Winnequa. One of my favorite things to do is sit on my porch, my chair, drink a beer, and watch all the bikers go by. Um, I've cycled a long time myself, so it's part of the reason we bought the home. Um, I have two young daughters, one's five, one's two, and I would really like to be able to take them to the park that's two blocks away and not have to very carefully police them the entire time we go down the street. Um, sidewalks seem like a solution to that, but I like the discussion about what are some of the other things we could potentially try as well. I'm not sold on sidewalks, but I think cyclists, pedestrians, and cars need more space from each other on that stretch. Um, so I'd like to see something done. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Sharon Lair, who would like to register and speak against um, acceptance of the plan. Sidewalks do not equal safety. I would like to show you a clip from a meeting of August 16th, 2017. This is from Jason Vargo, who was talking about the GIS course that was charged with identifying the unsafe areas in Winnequa. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. Going. Just for a little explanation for people, Jason Vargo. Is Many of you know we were part of the University Project three years ago, and Jason Vargo was the coordinator for the whole project um, from, for the university, actually. And I think this is a quote from a, I'm not sure if it's from a class. This is, is when they were reporting on the findings of the university after its completion. Okay. And he is talking about, yeah, the GIS course that was charged with identifying unsafe areas in Monona. And I came in early to get this up. all set up. Okay, you can start from here if you can just play it from here. Can we let someone else go while he works on this without to speed things along? Sure. Uh, let's see. I guess, David, were you doing something with the computer also? No. David Lehrer. No. No? Would you like to come up and speak while they? Sure. David Lehrer, 5801 Winnipeg Road. I've lived there since, uh, we've lived there since 1995. I'm a runner, I'm a biker, I'm an outdoor person. I've had three kids that have gone through K through 12 at Monona. I'm in favor of greater safety for bikers and pedestrians. But I'm here to speak in opposition to the adoption of the plan. This plan tees up miles of sidewalks taken down hundreds of trees and tens of millions of dollars of spending and it doesn't have sufficient public input. When I spoke two weeks ago I was talking about the trees 
and the environmental and community identity that would be destroyed with the plan but tonight I got to talk about the public input section of the plan it doesn't come close to adequately sampling resident opinion and to the limited extent that it does uh, the, the plan doesn't uh, follow the guidance uh, from the public opinion. Um, I wanted to just go through the sections, uh, the, the uh, parts of the plan listed under public input. Some of this has already been covered. We've got section 1.0, the gap analysis, and as was, as was brought up earlier. What isn't illustrated in the plan is uh, the, uh, this is the, Monona uh, strategic plan survey this page 18 in the survey and this has been brought up earlier here's where science here's where sidewalks rank in the importance among citizens in this survey it's right at the bottom so the gap analysis isn't uh, you know isn't justification or isn't um, uh, an indicator of the public's uh, desire for for sidewalks uh, the next part of this public input is uh, at item 2.2, Active Living Outreach Survey. Uh, and, and all of these supporting documents are on the website of the ad hoc committee. You should take a look at them. The uh, Active Living Outdoor uh, Outreach Survey is a poll of bikers, given by bikers. The respondents were uh, solicited through bike advocacy groups. They were given bike-related prizes to fill out the surveys. So it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't measure Monona public uh, support at all. Uh, it's, I mean, it, I don't even, I don't, I don't know why, and, and, the, and the questions guide towards, in the survey, guide toward answers that would support bike infrastructure. That's why Winnico Road gets mentioned so much. That comes up later in the public input uh, a portion of this. Um, We've got the safe routes to school study, been brought up earlier. Uh, a very small percentage of parents say no sidewalks is why I don't take my young person to school on the sidewalk. Um, but, I mean, that's a, a good group to survey, a narrow group, but a good group to survey. And, and that report looks like this. That report gives us a map of where the problem areas are. <coughs> Appendix A, this is not, this is what we should be looking at. This is around the schools. This isn't South Winnipeg Road. There's a companion piece to Your this. Your three minutes is up, Mr. Lehrer. Pardon me? Your three minutes is up. All right. Thank you. Is the sound fixed? Uh, let's <laughs> Great, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> class they looked at different um, they really tried to focus on evaluating the unsafe areas and existing bike pad and transit infrastructure um, even though a lot of the it's interesting that the recommendations from this class really include talking about managing volume and speed on the roads to improve safety um, it's it's ironic or maybe it's not that uh, when you look at the roads that actually have sidewalks in Monona uh, they are some of the roads where you have the most in injuries. So, discuss. Um, <laughs> okay, that's all. That's as close as I want to touch that one. Um, so, uh, there was also a group within that health impact assessment class that looked at. Um, so, um, sidewalks do not equal safety necessarily. And also, any one more thing, please? Um, I need to go back to question I right here. The current condition of sidewalks currently in Monona is not up to par. I don't know how the city of Monona is going to take care of all these new sidewalks when the current sidewalks are not in good repair. Um, if you walk along Nichols behind the park, which should be a major priority according to this report, this is what you'll find all along. So I've been told that property owners won't be 
responsible for the installation of sidewalks or the maintenance, but somebody's got to take care of these sidewalks, and this is what we have currently. So before we want to add miles and miles of sidewalks to a city that's three and a half square miles, I think we need to be able to take care of the sidewalks that we have. I ran into one woman who sustained multiple fractures by walking on the sidewalk, so I think there's other solutions that we can consider. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Julie Burns, who would like to speak in favor. Julie Burns, 6103 Winnequa Road. Um, so I was a member of the Ad Hoc Pedestrian and Bike Committee, and I am here to express my support for the Pedestrian and Bicycle Improvement Plan. And I, I do hope it is accepted by the City Council. My motivation to serve on this committee was and is the safety of my children. I have experienced several terrifying close calls with vehicles almost hitting my children on South Winnequa Road. And the thought of losing either of my children is horrifying. The goals of the pedestrian and bike improvement plan are important. They are to build safe and convenient pedestrian and bicycle accommodations that connect Monona neighborhoods to community destinations such as schools, parks, city buildings, restaurants, etc., and the greater region. The other goal is to ensure that the treatment of all users of Monona's transportation network is equitable and that their well-being is in mind when we plan our projects. When we think about equity, or when we were thinking about equity, we were talking about our children, people with physical disabilities, our aging citizens, people who do not drive or do not have a vehicle. I believe the presented improvement plan is well thought out and sound in its advice. The committee started reviewing all existing data and research in February of 2018, and over the course of the next 18 months, we spent many hours at home and in meetings reviewing each of our frequently used streets as possible and possible safe improvements. The result of our research and work does include recommendations and sound engineering recommendations to create a connected network of sidewalks and bike lanes as well as to implement traffic or speed calming measures that will allow people of all ages and all abilities to safely navigate from each side of Monona to the other. Um, you know, since being on this committee, I know, as some other people have said, I, I haven't been very popular with some of my neighbors. And people said, hey, you moved in here. You, you know, if you think the street is dangerous, don't use it. Well, I live on this busy street, and I have two young children that are four and seven. We must walk on, the pl on our street to get to places such as the bus stop, going to the beach, going to our friends' houses, to the park. I don't want to have to pack my children into a car every time that I want to go to the beach or a park or a friend's house. Um, no one has ever died there. There hasn't been a major accident. One approach to safety is waiting until someone is killed or seriously injured before addressing a problem. In my opinion, a far better approach is to identify hazards and mitigate them before my child or your child is killed or seriously injured. Your three minutes are up. So Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for considering. Uh, next is Craig Aswigan, who would like to register and speak against. Uh, no, I don't. I, I'm against. You're just registering against? Yes. Okay. And he is 6008 uh, Winnicott Road. Okay, next is George Lightburn who would like to speak against. I'm George Lightborn of 5900 Winnequa. Um, I'm appearing tonight to ask that you table re the report from the committee. Um, this is not a position that many of my neighbors and I relish. 
it's negative and that's not necessarily who we are. Um, it's, never un uh, it's never comfortable disagreeing with their fellow Monona citizens, especially people that put in the time to work on this report. And the, the report, quite frankly, has a lot that we can agree with. And yes, we've been told that receiving the report is only a first step. Don't worry, we're told there'll be many more hearings and presentations, so get, <laughs> buckle up, get ready. Um, before anything specific's done. And I'd like to thank the mayor for the letter uh, that you posted this week. It was a good first step. There's been a woeful lack of good communication on this project, which I think is, and, and my concern overall um, is <coughs> this is tearing the community apart in a way that's not healthy. It's incredibly unhealthy. Old and young, people with kids, people without kids, it's not a good thing. Um, so we're not comfortable being here, but we need to be here because we're skeptical because we've been told that sidewalks on Winnequa Road are a done deal by people in this room. Um, so, but let me be clear. We want, we the neighbors on Winnequa Road want a safer Winnequa Road. That's not what we're, we want all the children to be comfortable, all the parents would be comfortable. Um, but we wanted a safer Winnequa Road too in 2006, the last time the road was redesigned. Um, at that time, the residents of Winnequa Road were thanked for our input and were told that we'd grow to appreciate the bump outs. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, we were told that even though they seemed kind of odd, that we'd like it. It turned out to be an enormous mistake. I think we'd all agree on that. The engineers were wrong. The bump outs do not con traffic, they only serve to make walking and biking more hazardous. Engineers, don't listen to this fellas. <laughs> engineers and engineering standards are useful but they should never be determinative, whether they're called from calling for bump outs or sidewalks. So I'm requesting that you table this report that calls for a network of connected sidewalks I don't believe we need a network of connected sidewalks to thrive as a community. Instead, let's get to work making Winnequa Road safe for all. Yes, let's eliminate the bump outs, but let's also work on a solution that's been hiding in plain sight for more than a decade. Let's get serious, really serious, about slowing traffic on Winnequa Road. That's one simple solution that would lead to safer roads and no lost trees. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Claire Galing. Is Claire here? Thank you. Who would like to register and speak in favor? Hi. My name is Claire Galling and I live at 6110 Winnequa Road. Um, I'm in favor of the safe use of South Winnequa for cars, pedestrians, and cyclists. And I believe that the roadway is not safe for these groups today. Um, generally, I'm in favor of sidewalks and improved cycling infrastructure. So as a community, uh, all of us in Monona pay taxes um, to maintain South Winnicka Road. And it's right and necessary that everyone in Monona can safely access this important part of our community, not just able-bodied adults driving cars. Um, trees and beauty are very important. They're very important to our community. They're not more important than the safety of people. So finally, I believe that Monona is able to make an evidence-based decision um, informed by relevant professional expertise. Um, I'd like to affirm my support for the mayor and the city council and my fellow citizens for bringing careful study to this plan and I want to the city to adopt a plan that informed by community input is 100% aligned to current civic engineering standards unlike the last time when an engineered plan was kind of tossed out into the trash at the 11th hour and instead 
<laughs> I got bump outs. So I think that everyone would agree that standards are created by experts for good reasons and that experts have professional expertise. You know, if I wanted to buy a new car today, I wouldn't be able to buy one without seat belts or airbags. And I wouldn't be able to argue that there hadn't been an accident in my particular new car, therefore these safety regulations were not needed. So we can only buy and legally drive a car that meets certain standards, and I'd like Monona to adopt a safe plan that is fully endorsed by experts in accordance with Safe Street guidelines and not another lemon cobbled together by non-experts. Non so, and to that point, I'd also like to include a comment from my neighbor at 6108 Winnequa Road at his request because he's unable to be here tonight. He says, quote. What is his name? Andy, my neighbor Andy. How do you spell his last name? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, will, I will come to you later. Okay. I'll look it up. Wait. Yes, yeah, please. Andy says, I'll support whatever. As long as it isn't another half deleted <laughs> compromise, and that's my biggest fear, that let's engineers design it with some input from citizens rather than let the citizens and the city council design it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Norman Flynn, who would like to speak against. My name is Norman Flynn. I'm at 6209 Winnipeg Road. I've been a resident of Monona since 19... 67 uh, to wherever our good editorial friend is in 69. She's a late comer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm here to first come in and congratulate you for your studious and hard work in trying to put together the numbers to make decisions that will last for a long, long time. And I really appreciate all the time and energy that you spend over all these many weeks and months and years to, to generate these. I forewarn you, as a former debate coach at Monona Grove High School, I might tell you, and we won two state championships while we were there. If you don't have hard evidence, or if there is not a proven need, there ought not be ravaging changes or expensive changes. And what we do is what the mayor has done, and I would do if I were there, point task force that goes to work. They hire an, a company that has a database that's so deep that the most minuscule problem that you might see will have all kinds of data covering it. And they generate, therefore, a 50-page document that makes this look like a huge problem. I would analyze this to say that there is not a proven need. The speaker, three speakers before, gave evidence about the number of actual people that had had an incident in five years, and there were three, one of which was at Winnequa, a terrible name uh, that it's gotten from this particular report. And so I'm suggesting that we be very cautious when we analyze the data that we get from a process that is almost manipulated. And so I would ask you, and that seems to me that there's not adequate evidence that there's a need for overwhelming change. I do believe there's a need for some change to slow down the traffic. And that, I think, is a meaningful thing and should be attacked and looked at but focused on more than the easy one is to pour concrete on it because you can measure that you've done it. But the rest of it is can we get at the, the real issue and the real problem. And that is too much speed, not enough enforcement of the laws and regulations that control all vehicles, not just the cars, not just the bicycles, not just the pedestrians, but all needs need to be identified. 
and found ways in which it should be analyzed. I have one last point, and I'll be, I think, within the three minutes or very close. You're a couple seconds over, so good okay. finish. The, the one last point is we did circulate a petition through the Winnipeg neighborhood. I have a copy of the signatures there. It's a, a pro well over the majority of the households that responded. And I'd like to leave that with the clerk so that the council okay. can see what <coughs> names of the people. And that is are this there. the same as Sonny's petition, or is that a, that a different? It's not mine. Okay. Okay, sure. Bring it up. I'm not the only nutball. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Flynn. And Godspeed for you and all the work, good work you do. Thank you. Uh, next is Ben Redding, who would like to speak in favor. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, first of all, I want to commend the council. Could you state your address? Thank you, to yes. Ben. Uh, ben Redding, 6019 Queensway. Um, thanks to the council and the mayor. I thought that the uh, report um, and really just even having it in general is pretty brave. I've lived here for, I think, a while, since 2006 and uh, have been lightly politically involved enough to know that sidewalks are a political swear word in this town. Um, and I'm just, I'm quite thrilled to see something, some serious consideration go towards them. And I recommend passing or approving, excuse me, this plan. Um, you know, like many people here, I love the trees here. It's why I moved here. My introduction to Nona was driving down Winnic South Winnico Road. Um, I love oak trees. I ultimately bought my house on Queensway because I live on top of a hill. I had two oak trees. I had sadly had to cut one down because it was sick. I had it assessed by an arborist. I tried to save it. It was going to fall on my house. Um, I'm also, one of, from my recollection, one of the only few people uh, who actually spoke out against removing the oak grove at the corner of Monona Drive and Broadway. Um, now, that was private property, and there was not a whole lot to be done when they turned that into a parking lot for a Qdoba, but it, I felt it was tragic. Um, and perhaps the planning committee could have done something more. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's done now. All that said, I also am the uh, father of two kids, like many of the speakers in favor. Uh, two small kids, 11 and 7. Uh, my 7-year-old is autistic and risks has uh, problems with um, judging his risk. And he also needs a lot of gross motor exercise. And given that he's high functioning, we bike a lot. It's wonderful. It helps ease his moods, control his temper. I have to go places on these bikes and around Monona. And man, you know, I just recently did Winnequa. It was fine. The bridge was under construction. There weren't a lot of traffic. Uh, but you know, kind of hold my breath and hope, oh my God, stay in the lane. Can't see what's coming behind me. Um, I think that ideally, most bikers don't use the sidewalk. In our case, I think we certainly would for at least a while. Um, but I, you know, I also work in survey and mapping, and I kind of have an eye for trees and where things are. And man, I tell you, there are really, in my uh, you know, non-engineering uh, opinion, quite frankly, not a lot of trees nor gardens that need to come down on South Winnequa in the 60-foot right-of-way uh, on the west side. And that right-of-way is public property, um, not private property like where the Oak Grove was on the corner of Minota Drive and, and Winnequa, um, sorry, Broadway. Um, yeah, so thank you, and you know, I just want to say too, like, guys, we have to kind of look out for the minority populations, the people that can't, you know, speak up, that need safety, and I just, I agree with the, the committee person who spoke, and I thought that um, my friend Mike Kerr's words were very um, well said um, regarding kids and biking, and quite frankly, I'm mean, it's scary. I'm not a helicopter parent, and that's a really hard thing to do with an autistic kid. Um, but I still get freaked out, and I want my kids to bite. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Jimmer, who would like to speak against. If you could tell us your last name too, Jimmer. I don't know. I don't know about it. <laughs> it's uh, Jimmer Eunuch. I live at 6106 Queensway. Okay. I'm finding out a lot from this meeting tonight that people on Winnequa really care about these sidewalks going in. Um, I happen to live quite a ways from there. 
probably eight, six, eight blocks, let's say. Um, I'm not a fan of these sidewalks because <coughs> I've lived here since 2001. I've had a dog, I have a five-year-old daughter. I go out for two to three, four walks a day. Do you wanna know how many times I almost got hit? Zero, because I like know what I'm doing. I see the ad hoc committee as people that moved here to Monona. They bought their houses on the lake or across from the lake. Then they have kids. Now they want to make it all safe. I see that. I want safety for my child. I wish my daughter could walk to school. Unfortunately, it's not because of sidewalks. It's because I'm worried someone's going to steal her. I think we need to do something that's safe, but at the same time, it's uh, it's not right to just jump into this. And I'm more concerned about the economic impact. As a realtor, I sell houses. People choose to move to McFarland because they can build a $400,000 house and their payments are the same as buying a $300,000 house in Monona because of the tax base here. If you keep spending this money, our tax base is going to keep growing every year and pretty soon you're pricing people out of being able to afford in Monona. I, I heard someone speak population in the 60s were 11,000 people and we're down to 7,800 people now. There's a reason we keep shrinking and less people are living here because we're pricing them out slowly and it's going to keep happening. So I think we need to do something safety wise. I don't think that a bunch of sidewalks and spending a bunch of money is necessarily something we should jump into. I think you need to get some of the opinions of the people. Like I said with my walks, I walked around my neighborhood on uh, Saturday and Sunday, and I asked my neighbors, I, I, I took the petition that someone put out just to see what people said. 14 of my neighbors are against this. And I know I've got Mike and Ben, and these guys are neighbors of mine and stuff, and Jen's a neighbor. We, we all walk in our road, and I'm pretty sure no one's ever said to me, like, holy man, did you see those cars flying down? They almost hit me. I understand where you guys are on Winnequa and stuff, but like I said, I'm against it basically because of the economic impacts. I see we could spend money like this somewhere else better right now. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next is Mary Posseen, who would like to speak in favor. Hi, I'm Mary Pacin. I live at 4509 Midmore Road in Monona, um, and I was on the Ad Hoc Pedestrian Bike Committee. I've lived here since, I don't know, must be 1992, something like that. My children are grown, so I don't live on the lake and I don't have small children. Um, a couple points I'd like to make, and I'd really, um, some of the things that have been said here tonight by this young woman here, I'm sure, sorry, I don't know your name, <coughs> but I really appreciated what you had to say and what Katie had to say on the committee. Um, just some points I'd like to make. First of all, I'm a cyclist. I commute to my job at UW-Madison most days, uh, 15 miles round trip from my home on Midmore Road, um, down Winnicott Road. Um, I am also a motorist. I drive my car in this community too, so, uh, and most of, most of the, those who cycle around Monona are both. We're not just cyclists. Um, we're as likely to scuff lot on the streets as all of us who drive cars. Uh, if you drove here tonight, you broke the law. Almost certainly you rolled through a stop sign. You didn't come to a total and complete stop. Um, uh, when I served on this committee, what I thought we were doing was providing a conceptual plan to the city council. And what we spent a lot of our time on were the safe routes. We didn't spend that much time on the engineering piece and we didn't spend that much time on South Winnequa because we're not engineers. So I happen to be educated in civil engineering, that was my undergraduate degree, but I am not a licensed design engineer and I certainly have no expertise in transportation design. And so uh, what I really hope that we do uh, is, is really listen to the experts on this and that's what we will be doing. And I'm sure that's what the council will be doing as they move to look at different aspects of Monona and think about uh, implementing um, safe passage is part of this uh, of our plan in Monona. Um, I think that we're hearing a lot of armchair engineering surrounding Winnicott Road and it really worries me because that's where we got to where we are in Winnicott Road right now. Um, so please uh, when, when engineering design is properly done um, engineers are given 
they're given a challenge or a charge or a problem, they're given constraints that they have to solve that problem, and then they bring alternatives to that problem. And so we need good design engineers that will work with us on a solution to Winnequa Road. I'm not here to advocate for any particular solution to Winnequa Road. I will tell you as a cyclist that that road as it currently stands is extremely unsafe. It feels unsafe. It, I, I ride all the way into the heart of urban Madison, the UW Madison, uh, every day, and there are three spots that scare me, and Winnequa Road is one of them. The other two are uh, intersections in the city of Madison that need some work. But, um, and the reason it's, it's really terrifying for cyclists is that road is not wide enough to accommodate all of the uses on that road. Because what happens is, you have these cars that are whizzing by you at sometimes like 18 inches. You know, and, and there's nothing you can do. At the intersections that I'm worried about on my commute to work, I have control over what's going on there. I know how the cycles work, I can ride defensively, you know, I can make sure that uh, I don't die in one of those intersections. I cannot defend myself against getting run off the road or getting hit from behind. And if you start Googling around, you'll find that a great deal of cyclist deaths are from getting hit by behind. Mary, so, thank you. All right, at your thanks. Limit. Thank you. Uh, David Schroeder would like to speak for informational purposes only. <clears throat> So David Schroeder, 4219 Winnequa. Uh, you can relax, I'm only gonna say three things. Maybe only two, because I can't th think of three things. Uh, I'm, I'm a very avid dog walker. You're gonna see me every day, unless it's below zero. Uh, I'm out there, and so I'm coping with the streets a little bit. I gotta walk a little bit on Winnequa. Uh, people drive too fast on Winnequa, and then I can get up to you know, another road, Wallace, or, or uh, some of the roads that are <coughs> very nice to walk on. Um, one of the things that strikes me is that some of the people who might be in this sidewalk thing might be asked to, to give up the most or be hurt the most are also the people who are going to pay the most, kind of economics again, you know, uh, because of the tax base. And so I'm thinking, well, gee, um, that doesn't seem fair, uh, not, not a real good formula. So maybe if we're going to do something and fund it, maybe everybody should pay, every household should pay the same. Uh, and let's see how many people really want sidewalks. And um, I guess that probably boils down to a referendum or you know, really getting the input of, of uh, uh, lots and lots of people. So thanks, I appreciate your work and we're, we need to get to the right direction, right? Thank you. Just a point of information, the city will be paying for any sidewalks. You will not be assessed if we build sidewalks on your property. That's a- It's based off the taxes. That's a, well, exactly, but you will not be Same as- thing. Right, if right but that- 500,000 versus 250. And that will be a- Yeah, right. Even the city will be paying for it. You won't be assessed separately is the, is right. the point, in addition to your taxes, so. Um, <laughs> next is Carrie, Terry Dayton. Ter Terry or Carrie Dayton, 4704 Winnequa. Must have left, wanted to speak and register against. Sean Gendrich. Hello, this is my uh, first time speaking at City Council. I'm Sean Gendrich. I live at 601 West Dean Avenue, which I think is important for this conversation. We have one of the few major sidewalks in Menor and by major I mean we have one <laughs> so um, I'm in favor of this and I just want to uh, maybe give some insight from the perspective of somebody who has a sidewalk in Monona um, we have folks who come to our street with their three-year-olds where they're scooting their bicycle without any pedals when they're learning how to ride uh, we have elderly that come to our street because they have walkers and it's one of the safe places they can go. Um, we have mature trees. Uh, you get those by planting trees, if anybody wants to. Um, so I really just wanted to come up and um, talk about this as we're looking at this as what's going to happen tomorrow. And hopefully what we're thinking about is the long term of the community. And I applaud this plan because it really is just a vision, right? It gives some parameters about 
how we would change Monona over a long period of time to adapt with the culture of who we've become. We walk more, we bike more as adults. We're struggling with obesity. I should bike more. Um, and when I go for walks in the community, I like being able to walk on our street, and I like to go further than that too. I have friends all over town. I walk on Winnequa. It's not very good for my stress levels. I have high blood pressure. And hopefully I'll go having a beer with my friends who are opposed to the sidewalks versus when they're zipping by in a car. And I guess that's all I had to say. Thanks. Thank you. And our final speaker is Chris Bondurant. And does anybody else want to speak? Okay. And he would like to speak for informational purposes. Okay. Okay, uh, my name is Chris Bondurant. I live at 6209 Midwood Avenue. And some of the things I've noticed just with the construction going on, we have twice as much, um, Midwood runs parallel to South Winnequa. So I have a lot, I have twice the traffic now going by my house now. So the one way I think is not fair to me, because all the houses from Frostwoods down will be coming down Midwood to turn left to get around back home. So one idea is how about having a double bike lane one side, <clears throat> no bike lane on the other, one way for bikes, and then there's room to walk, and then the bikers can come back up on Midwood or whatever, instead of inconvenient, are we inconveniencing more drivers than bikers? A lot of the bikers we have don't even live in Monona. So I mean, that would make it quite safe. We could get out a lot of paint and paint the bike lane where the bump belts are so people understand. Follow the yellow road, right, or whatever. <laughs> whatever color you want. We don't need to take anything down any trees that die, nobody can plant another tree. 50 years down the road when we need to do the road, we'll have the room. People will know, because uh, I think that is a terrible idea of having a one-way road. Because I mean, this is a thoroughfare for people with automobiles. That's what it was designed for. Bikers need to learn to work their way back into it. You know, how do we accommodate you, not how do we change everything for you? We have enough room. Put it on one side, paint it a color that everybody knows, make it one way for bikers. I think, and I think that'd be a heck of a lot cheaper. Because I'm with the uh, other people with taxes. I'm ready to move right now. My taxes are way too high. I grew up in, Winnic or in Minona at 5107 Winnicott Road. Worked at Chapco through high school. I know Winnicott Road back and forth all the time. Skateboarding, biking, whatever. Eric Fox, they drove by your house a million times, okay? I grew up two doors down from you, yep. the mayor, okay? I have three kids that are growing up. Yeah, it scares the hell out of me sometimes, but that's why I hold my kid when I'm crossing Monona Drive. Yeah, it's scary, okay? Take care of your kids. You know, you don't send a seven-year-old kid out on Winnicott by himself. You just don't. But what road do you on in Monona, right? Who goes anywhere near Monona Drive? I used to live behind Monona Grove High School and we'd have to cross Win <coughs> or Monona Drive to get my kids into school at IHM. I tell you, you know, that was a lot of scary days. My kids are, you know, they're 15, 16, 17, now 18, whatever. Uh, that was, you know, I had to be on my toes, but I was. You know, I, stood there, I made sure the cars knew what was going on. And as far as getting trucks off the road, uh, truck roads have yellow signs, done. Push them up on Bridge Road, push them up to Monona Drive, down Nichols Road. There does not ever need to be another dump truck on Winnicott Road. That would make it a heck of a lot safer. Because who's making all the traffic, and who's making all the noise, and who's racing back and forth? Dump trucks. Okay? That's an easy fix. Well, here, are, how much money have I spent on paint? I think your right. three minutes are up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I had one further, uh, Matt Cushman and Heidi Brown of 812 Owen Road uh, wanted to register against. So does anybody else want to say anything? Did you want to speak? Yeah. Could you fill out a, f I, I guess did. you have a form? I did fill out a form and I said I didn't want to speak, but I didn't want to talk. Oh, okay. okay. Do you want to give us your name? Yeah. Uh, Phil Lee, 6207 Winnicott Road. 
been a resident here since 1976. Uh, gone through all the changes on Winnicott Road to its present condition of being a speedway. I think there's a major misconception about bike paths. Bike paths, I'm sorry, sidewalks are not bike paths. If we have sidewalks, it is illegal in Monona to ride on the sidewalk on your bicycle. So maybe there's going to be some age um, adjustments. Maybe if they are under three or whatever and learning to ride their bike. But adults riding on the bike path is illegal. Now, I personally, I'll ride on the bike path going down Monona Drive past Lake Edge Shopping Center because I'm not going to go out on Monona Drive on my bike. But people have the same feeling on Winnequa. I'm not going to ride on Winnequa. I'll ride on the sidewalk. It's illegal. It's not going to accomplish what you want. You're going to have a sidewalk. You're still going to have the bicycles competing with cars. The main problem is speed. Um, red, si red crosswalks like they have up on Monona Drive. Um, a speed sign that says your speed is like they have at La Follette High School. Um, Rosendale, if you go 35 miles an hour, if you go 36 miles an hour in Rosendale and the speed limit is 35, you're going to get a ticket. Let's get that reputation here. Sidewalks are not the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're done with the appearance section of the meeting and we lost Alder Groupie, so I need to call her. Um, she has been watching while it's streaming, but. Okay, sorry, Molly. Um, no problem. Before we continue, Sonny, did you want to turn in your signatures or? We didn't have a chance to make copies of them, so we can have copies. Copy okay, so if you want to just drop them off at City okay. Hall, then when you get a chance, okay. All right, uh, there is no public hearing. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Sorry. Who was the first? I'm sorry. I was the first. Okay, sorry. thank you. <laughs> All in favor of approving the consent agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item G1, under unfinished business, uh, consideration of resolution 19-8-2367, review and acceptance of pedestrian bicycle improvements plan put forth by the Ad Hoc Pedestrian and Bicycle Committee. Is there a motion to approve this? Move to approve. Second. Second, okay. All right, alders. Um, who would like to talk first? I guess. Well, f I'm sorry. First of all, we need to have the presentation. I totally <laughs> forgot about that. So Jeff Held from Strand will uh, give a short presentation about the plan. <coughs> okay, uh, thanks for having me tonight again. Jeff Held with Strand Associates, worked with the Ad Hoc Committee on the Pet and Bike Plan. Um, you know, really good discussion tonight, a lot of valid points made. Um, I've got a, just kind of a brief overview of what's in the plan. Um, I did want to mention a couple of things. Um, there are, there's no recommendations for any street widening. Um, that's not uh, part of what came out of the engineering portion of it. Um, in fact, there could be alternatives for narrowing if there's a full reconstruct on the table down the road. Um, I had nothing to do with the existing bump outs. I want to say that. Um, <laughs> and uh, I guess that's probably, that's probably all. Um, 
So the topic tonight, or the, or the agenda tonight, is to talk a little bit about um, what's on the council's agenda tonight. Um, why create a pedestrian and bicycle plan? I'll go over the organization of it, which I, I gather many of you have taken a look at it already. Um, and then briefly touch on some of the street classifications and, and key routes that were identified in the plan. So on the agenda tonight, um, the plan has been developed over the past 18 months by an ad hoc committee uh, and Strand Associates. We've heard some of this already. Um, it identifies priority routes for pedestrians and bicyclists that connect the city's community destinations, such as schools, parks, the library, etc. So what the plan is, it offers engineering, enforcement, education and encouragement, and evaluation recommendations to improve accommodations in Monona. And it's really a framework for future projects moving forward. What it is not, um, it does not mandate any specific improvements for South Winnicott or any other street, and it does not commit any funds to specific projects. It really lays out priority corridors uh, and recommends possible improvements on those corridors to be considered by future projects. Not on the agenda tonight is the South Winnicott Road design. Um, there's a lot of discussion of that. Um, there is discussion of South Winnicott in the plan, but the actual design that would be carried forward is not, not on the agenda tonight. Um, the process for Winnicott, as well as any other major street projects, uh, there will be additional public information meetings, additional dialogue. Um, the proposed improvements will go to the Public Works Committee for review, uh, comments and a vote, and then they'll come before council, um, likely in a similar format to this plan where there'll be a first reading at one meeting, and then the next council meeting would be when it would be acted upon. And the public can come and make comments on those uh, just like you have tonight. So why create a pedestrian and bicycle plan? Um, this is a very condensed version of the discussion that's in the plan, but some of the key uh, issues are access. Uh, based on a survey in 2012 of residents, 22% of Winnequa school students walk or bike, yet 70% live within two miles of the school. Uh, from an equity standpoint, nationally over 10% of adults over 65 stay at home on a given day because they don't have other options. Um, and we've got an example right here of uh, someone walking in the street. There's health implications as well. Um, People with safe places to walk uh, tend to meet recommended activity levels more often. This is national information. Uh, people in walkable neighborhoods did 25 to 45 more minutes of moderate intensity physical activity per week. So there's good health benefits associated with providing improved pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure. And from a safety standpoint, uh, documented crashes, survey responses, and routine public feedback about, feedback about a lack of pedestrian and bicyclist safety uh, in Monona warrants a plan for action. So this is something that the ad hoc committee talked a lot about. There's been a lot of support for improving conditions for pedestrians and bicyclists over the years, and it's been a discussion that's been going on for, uh, you know, 10 plus years probably among city leaders. So in 2012, there was a, the Monona Community Survey, which some people had some examples of the results of that. Um, there was the gap analysis that measured how important uh, city services were to residents versus how well the city was delivering on those services. Um, the second highest gap was the city sidewalk system. And the fourth highest was the bike and <coughs> pedestrian accommodations. Um, so this was, some, this was one of the um, pages that someone held up earlier. This shows that gap analysis, um, <clears throat> the overall importance in blue and the execution in red. Um, and uh, there was a mention of the sidewalk system being low on the priority list, <clears throat> um, which it was in terms of um, what was asked for, but there was also kind of a double up on the question, uh, bike and pedestrian accommodations uh, ranked a little higher than that. So at any rate, the city, um, you know, it's good policy to put your efforts towards the things that are the largest gap in an analysis like this, and that's kind of uh, two of these things. Sure. Could you explain what the red on the left is? Yep, so the blue is the, the score given for importance. Uh, and so people ranked things from, I think it was zero to nine, um, as far as how important it was to them. And then the red was a score for how well the city's doing at providing that service. And they, uh, you could score negative uh, zero um, to negative nine as well. And so the difference uh, between how well the city is accomplishing something versus how important it is is what the gap is. So this is showing the, the highest gap was street repair 
Second highest was sidewalk system, storm drainage, and then bike and pedestrian accommodations. So and this report's available on the website. Um, it's linked on the, the page with the bike plan. Um, this is just one snapshot from that report. Um, the Monona, Monona Comprehensive Plan recommends an advisory ped and bike committee uh, recommended that, that that occur in 14 and 15 and create solutions and funding in 2016. So it's something that's in the comp plan um, that was adopted uh, and is a priority. The uh, sustainability plan in 2015 also recommends preparation of a ped and bike plan to identify gaps and prioritize improvements. So a lot of study uh, or a lot of city studies over the years have proposed this. And as well as public feedback given in several city Monona surveys, um, repeated concerns by residents over issues with ped and bike safety along Monona streets, especially along routes to schools, parks, and other key destinations. So the city's done a lot of study of this, and there's a lot of good information on the website. As far as how this plan is organized, there's an introduction um, with a kind of a summary. The public input section is second. Um, it goes over in more detail some of these previous surveys and results. Um, there were ad hoc meetings from February through November of 2018 that were open to the public. PIM one was in May, 18, uh, May 8th, 2018. Um, we went before Public Works and Safety uh, in August of 2018, about a year ago. PIM two was September of last year. Um, there was a presentation on the engineering portion of the document in February to the council. Um, and there will be future opportunities uh, if any of these recommendations are incorporated into actual projects by the city. Uh, from the engineering section is the third section that identifies key pedestrian and bicycle routes in the city. Um, this is a graphic from that section. It also categorizes those routes um, based primarily on the volume and speed of traffic uh, on those routes <coughs> and prioritizes possible projects for those priority <coughs> corridors. Section four is on enforcement, focuses on policies and policing. Um, offers recommendations on ways to make enforcing the law more equitable to all users. Education and encouragement highlights the way, uh, ways that the city can encourage and incentivize non-motorized transportation. Um, an example there on the lower right is a bike fair um, where you're, you're getting um, residents together, children to um, ride an obstacle course and try to uh, generate excitement and enthusiasm for bicycling, those types of um, functions. Uh, section six is on evaluation, and it recommends that the city annually examine the progress towards the goals in the plan. Uh, it gives some examples of ways to quantify success. Here's one of the bicycle barometers that the city of Madison has on, um, I think that's the Southwest commuter path there. And then there's the next steps section that prioritizes projects and identifies estimated future costs. So um, it, it kind of summarizes the possible improvements that uh, this and future councils would consider. So the overall goal identified by the ad hoc committee and um, vetted at the public meeting and refined um, is to provide safe and convenient pedestrian and bicycle accommodations that connect Monona neighborhoods and community destinations to the greater region. The objectives to provide street and intersection design that is sustainable, sensitive to Monona's unique context, lowers travel speeds and safely accommodates pedestrian and bicycle movements. So the sensitive to Monona's context portion was something that was added after the first public meeting. It actually it gets to the issue of the trees and the canopy. Um, the, the idea behind that is that um, as these projects come along, they should be sensitive to these things that are unique to Monona and do everything that can be done to balance the, the competing objectives. Uh, provide off-street pedestrian routes to schools, community facilities, parks, and businesses where appropriate. Provide bike route options that connect neighborhoods to schools, community facilities, parks, and businesses. And provide high quality and safe pedestrian and bicycle connections to adjacent communities and regional facilities. So that was the, the framework we used to start identifying the key routes. Um, I do want to mention uh, the street classification concept was brought up earlier. Um, collectors and arterials and those types of streets. Uh, this is just a snapshot of the current classification for Monona roads. Uh, this is by the Madison Area Transportation Planning Board, which is the, the Metropolitan Planning Organization for the Madison metro area. And you can see the um, collector routes there. The South Winnick was, is, is right here, um, Bridge Road and Frost Woods. And this was not something that we um, 
that we followed directly. The key routes did not necessarily match this, but it's important to understand that there is a certain, certain functionality to streets and how they operate, not only for cars, but also for bikes and pedestrians. So we began, began by looking at key destinations around the community and uh, mapping out basically what the existing facilities are. On the left is the sidewalks, the current existing sidewalks. They tend to be along um, the minor arterials, which are Broadway and Monona Drive, and then along a couple of the collectors. Um, but you can see there's very little north-south connectivity, especially um, uh, in the uh, city. And the bike routes are shown there on the right, uh, including the Lake Loop, some of the designated routes, uh, and the bike lanes along Broadway and Monona Drive as well. Some of the potential pedestrian improvements. Um, this is a map um, recently put together. Um, this shows the higher priority corridors. Uh, it does not show every um, corridor that's proposed for sidewalks to be considered. Uh, but these are the ones that connect uh, some of the, the major destinations. Um, so you can get a, a sense for where the plan is recommending some of those improvements. So the yellow <clears throat> um, are, would, would be the locations for new sidewalk. The orange are the locations of the existing. Again, to be considered on a case-by-case -case basis as the, as the city uh, puts together their capital improvement program every year. So talk a little bit about traffic calming. Um, there was a, quite a few comments about the speeds, and the plan does agree with that and recommends that streets be considered for calming as they come up for projects. Um, so the plan recommends that the city <coughs> determine the need for and type of features at the time of, of near-term improvements or at the time of these projects. Um, some of the things mentioned, speed display boards are a good idea, um, speed bumps or tables. Um, generally, the, the plan recommends that for volume, uh, low volume corridors under 750 vehicles per day with speeds under 30 miles per hour, that proposed markings, signage, and other improvements should be sufficient. So there, are, there is a category <laughs> of streets in the plan that um, if the volumes are lower and the speeds are lower that we don't recommend uh, or recommend that uh, sidewalks wouldn't necessarily be necessary. Um, the plan recommends using treatments that have lower impact on emergency response vehicles. That was brought up earlier. Um, the uh, concept of the raised intersections is one that can be compatible with emergency response. Um, there's a, two or three that were put on Monroe Street last year, last summer for construction. Um, that's an emergency response route. Um, so we do recommend that, that, that uh, these treatments, uh, that those factors be considered, that emergency response be considered in developing the final plans. So some of the things, striping, speed displays, enforcement activities as well. And here are the raised intersections again. Um, they're, they're pretty gentle. The, this is a concrete example, uh, and this is an example that's done in asphalt. Uh, street tree survey. Um, I know this has been, there's been a lot of discussion of this, and so we've, uh, some of the information about the recent uh, work on that. Uh, last year, UW Forestry Student Survey um, found that Monona street tree inventory is aging. Mature trees have begun to show signs of distress or disease. Um, it's typical for larger street trees mm -hmm. and the growing conditions present within uh, Monona, uh, Monona's street right away. Uh, surveyed totaled 3,280 trees in the city right away. About 559 were ash, um, and all of which those will be lost over the next the coming years. Uh, but it's important to note that no tree is going to be removed uh, without confirmation of the condition by the city arborist. Um, so that all those findings would be confirmed uh, at the time of any actual project being implemented. So with that, happy to answer questions from the council. Um, if there's any specific items you'd like to address. Does anyone have any specific questions for Jeff? Yeah. <coughs> Alder Thomas. I have a question. Um, yeah, the and this speaks more to South Winnipeg. <coughs> um, the number of cars have increased, and I, I live, on, I should state that I live on Winnipeg near Owen Road. Mm -hmm. I have noticed since the stoplight went in at Owen, or at, at, at um, and Winnipeg, at Menorah Drive, that more cars are turning, coming down Owen, and turning onto Winnequa to avoid um, the intersection. Mm. We still have cars turning down on Frost Woods and taking bridge. 
to avoid that intersection. Yep. We are, have a, a new development going up with lots of apartments which are going to affect the Bridge Road intersection. But I see nothing about, say, limiting right turns. I know Dane County controls that street. Mm. But I think that you could have a significant impact on both Bridge and Winnequa if we limited right turns. And I didn't see any of that in there. And, and the fewer cars, the, the safer it would make the street. So, so I understand you would uh, southbound Monona Drive right turns to go on to Frostwoods and ultimately Bridge. Is that mm -hmm. yeah? <clears throat> they um, go on. They go. They they turn at Owen and they either turn on Bridge or they turn on Winnequa. Okay. If it's at the Frostwoods light, they turn right and they come down Frostwoods and they go on Bridge. Sure. It's a way to to avoid the intersection at Monona Drive. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> the best it thing adds a lot of Madison traffic. Sure. The, the, the best thing that could happen with that is for the uh, WSDOT to fix the Beltline because I think most people would use Monona Drive to get to the Beltline if it wasn't as backed up as it is. People use Broadway to avoid the Yahara River Bridge because of the backups. So in terms of actually restricting movements, that's a, that's a pretty extreme um, Madison measure. does it on at what, on at what Avenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that could be looked at. Um, it's, it's a pretty extreme reaction to that type of cut through traffic. Um, typically, um, you know, you try to calm that traffic <laughs> first and, and make sure that if people are using the street, um, that they're, they're doing it at a, re a reasonable and responsible speed. That's usually the first step. Um, and there were some steps taken with the markings out there on Frostwoods and Bridge uh, to try and make things a little better for that. Um, but uh, ultimately, you know, traffic calming is usually your first option for something like that. My, my other question, and, and it's only because I can, I see that there are a thousand bikes in one part of the report. It says a thousand bikes a day that go down one of them. Yeah, I couldn't find that. But, but, <laughs> I'm but, not sure where that came from, but. But, um, if you, but if you look at the university study, mm -hmm. they say a thousand, a hundred thousand bikes a year at the intersection of Winnequa and Bridge. Mm. If you had a thousand a day, you'd have three hundred and sixty-five thousand going down there. Right. So I, so I'm trying to figure out which number I is. Can, I can answer that. Okay. That that number is not a daily bike traffic number. It's a peak summer day number. It's based on a account that a number of the committee members. Yeah, did a hand, you know, set out at the end of the driveway and counted bikes. Folks, could we have quiet back there, please? Or if you'd like to speak, could you go out in the hall? So that's a peak, what? It was a, so that was on a uh, Saturday in the summertime, good weather. So you're okay. obviously, that's going to be. Okay, but that's, I think that's not what it says in the report. It says a thousand a day. It does say that. And that's in the university report, I believe, right? No, that's a thousand there. The university says a hundred thousand at the intersection of Bridge and Winnipeg annually. You can't bike in the winter as many as in the summer. Maybe that's why it's not three hundred and sixty-five thousand right. and it's only a hundred thousand. Right. Yeah. I'm. Just, I, I. I live there. I don't. I don't. And most days there aren't a thousand bikes a day. So I'm just trying, I was just trying to figure out where the number was coming from. Okay. Okay, folks, could we please have quiet, or if you'd like to speak, could you go out in the hall? Say 1,500 in an Ironman. And if you've done the Winnipeg on that Ironman, okay. there's 700 in a day. That's six hours worth of biking. Thank you. Nonstop. Okay, no we would please, could you let keep this to the council? I myself sat in Winnipeg one day last summer and counted 80 in an hour on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. So it does happen some days. Um, would any any of the other council have any questions for Mr. Held? No one? Okay. Um, thank you, Jeff. Yep, thank you. And then we will begin our discussion. So, Jeff or Doug, do you want to start? Sure. Um, my name is Doug Wood. I live at 5304 Schluter Road. I was the, the chair of the ad hoc committee 
and as has been said, the plan was a result of work uh, by many people, professional engineers from Strand, uh, started out with Tom Lynch, and then uh, Jeff actually did, the, came on pretty early and took over, and also Josh Straka, as well as uh, a number of city staff, including Dan Stefani, Brad Brown, Jeff Johnson, and Police Lieutenant Kurt Weigel. Um, the committee was appointed by the mayor, including myself, and then Alder Chad Spate, and five citizen members, including members of the Public Safety and Public Works Committees, and the principal of Winnequa School. I think there was a um, fairly wide range in and then how long people had lived here, I guess, if that matters. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if you've lived here a long, a long time like I have, that means you've lived here a long time and you probably know more of the history, but it doesn't make, it doesn't make the, the viewpoint of someone who's only lived here one year or five years or 10 years any less important. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> This committee took its work very seriously. We met um, uh, numerous times, and committed, uh, the members committed many hours and numerous evenings to it, and I commend them for their willingness to serve, especially on an issue which they knew was going to be a uh, subject of controversy. I have lived here a long time, 35 years in three different locations in the city, and it's a wonderful place, but it's not perfect. No community can thrive without change and honestly evaluating its shortcomings. And to put it simply, much of Monona is not very walkable. We have great parks, schools, great library, great programming, but it can be difficult to walk to these destinations because on too many of our main streets, we have to walk in the road with the cars, too many of whom are indeed going too fast. It can be an unnerving experience even for a healthy adult. I actually observed today, um, just afternoon on, on South, the, South Winnequa, near the intersection of Maywood, a young uh, woman walking with a stroller and two young children, I would estimate maybe three and five, something like that. And it was very clear that she was uh, very uncomfortable, very concerned about uh, keeping, making sure, she literally sort of uh, moving her children back away from traffic as near the curb as they could be. Um, our transportation network should be equally available to all users. Everyone has a right to safe, convenient, and accessible transportation corridors, including not just cars, but pedestrians. As Mary Pocine made the point earlier, I think we are people who bike also drive and walk, and so it's a lot of the, we're talking about the same, <laughs> the same folks here. Um, all pedestrians include school children, older walkers, and those with mobility limitations. Especially for these residents, walking in the street is not safe. Walking also provides tremendous health benefits, and the report documents uh, what I thought was a shocking national rise in obesity and diabetes. That, um, without convenient, safe sidewalks and paths that go to the places people want to go, there are a number of people who simply will forego walking altogether. If we were building an, a network from scratch, we would almost certainly include sidewalks on all streets. But the committee knew that wasn't its task and understood that the plan needed to fit Monona's particular context. So we developed a plan for sidewalks and some paths along our busiest streets, along streets connecting to the places people want to go and to create complete corridors, not willy-nilly and not everywhere. 
The committee also understood that building sidewalks would inevitably require the removal of trees located in the city's right of way. I know that this mayor and this council will insist that the removal of trees be minimized to the ex maximum extent possible. The design of each project will be done on a specific case-by-case -case basis. Sidewalks can be meandered around particularly important trees. We wrote a plan that we believe will make Monona an even better place to live and one that is more walkable for all of our residents. I should say that it's a, it, this is a plan. Um, it's a long way from being listed in a plan as a potential project to becoming an actual project. It has to get into a budget, first of all into a capital budget that are approved annually and that are tight. Um, after that, it has to go through engineering design. We typically uh, budget money for design work in one year with construction following the next year. So um, taking one of these particular projects and turning it into an actual project um, is generally going to be a multi-year process. Uh, I think this is a good plan. Many hours of work by many, good, my, many people went into its making. I stand by it. It's not perfect. It's a plan. They never are. I would note that tonight we are voting to accept the plan, not to approve it. The plan will be implemented or not in future capital budgets as the, this mayor and this council and future mayors and councils think fitting and proper. The plan charts a changing course, a way forward to a more walkable, more inclusive Monona. I'm proud to support it and to have played a role in its development. Okay, thank you. Alder Kitzler? I have, sorry to kind of backtrack. I do have some questions and I don't know if Doug as the chair or Strand maybe at some point, but. Um, so one of the questions I had, uh, in no particular order, the passage of this plan out of the ad hoc committee, was it unanimous or? Yes. Okay. Um, some of the comments on the feeder streets, or I'm probably incorrectly saying the term for what we're talking about, Winnequa. Maybe this is a strand question. I'm wondering what the difference between Dean and Nichols and Winnequa is, because Dean and Nichols have sidewalks and have less traffic, and Winnequa has more traffic and no sidewalks. So I'm just kind of wondering, I mean, maybe there's a historical significance to it, but I don't know. You know, I, I can't really speak to the history behind the sidewalks on Dean and Nichols versus none on Winnequa. I'm not sure. OK. Uh, sorry for putting you on the spot for that. Um, <laughs> Uh, one of the other questions I had and one of the statements that were brought up a great deal was the environmental impact and I was wondering if that was considered in that or you know it doesn't explicitly state that in the charge but at the same time you know what role did that play in it I guess is a simple question yeah I think we talked a fair amount about trees and right. the desire to acknowledge that they're important to Monona and should be protected um, you know, those decisions really come on a project by project basis. And so I don't think we got overly specific with that. Mm -hmm. um, I did mention that the um, comment about respecting Monona's context was really aimed at that. Um, you know, in terms of impervious area, um, in the grand scheme of things, the, the additional sidewalks is a pretty small amount of impervious area compared to the streets and roofs and parking lots. Um, but that's something to consider. Um, and, um, you, you know, there are, <clears throat> alternatives depending on the level of reconstruction there could be an option in narrow streets which would reduce that mm -hmm. impervious area to offset the sidewalk but that would have to be made on a case-by-case -case basis thanks and then uh, in the report there was a number of questions kind of around all of the things that were considered by the ad hoc committee was that ever I mean not going through all these plannings before but like what 
is that ever considered to add to the plan so that the public and or us can see kind of what was considered and why or why not it was selected to move forward? In terms of the uh, things we, some of the things we heard tonight or some of the things that led up to the recommendations yeah, that are in there? Yeah, led up to the recommendations. I mean, I don't know what was considered during the committee discussions, but just sure. wondering if. Yeah, you know, probably the meeting minutes would be the best way to see the progression of it. Um, there was definitely an evolution in terms of, um, you know, I remember one of our early graphics, we were talking about some potter, uh, some planters p potentially as separators uh, for on-street facilities, but um, there's just not a lot of space for that, and there was concern about maintenance of those things and the cost of them and so on. So there was definitely some evolution right. in that. Um, I, I guess I don't. I don't know that it's necessarily memorialized completely in the report. No, yeah, I would agree. I mean, there were a lot of different iterations of, in particular, the engineering mm -hmm. report that they would, they, um, we had an initial meeting and sort of set out what we're, we're going to try to do and then said Strand, you know, start working on that and they brought it to us and then it would obviously, um, based on the committee's responses to that, it got changed. Mm -hmm. And then we'd look at it again. And so it was a, a gradual, yeah. yeah. Would that be, a, is it unusual to have that in the plan or not have, I mean? Um, you could certainly put the meeting minutes into an appendix if that's something that um, okay. you'd like to see more visible. I, I would also say that the type of traffic calming that ended up being recommended evolved as well. We ended up with the sort of raised intersection idea right. concept and we talked about a lot of other concepts prior to that as well. Yeah. But we could talk more about whether there could be another appendix. And the and minutes are available on the website. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one other question. Maybe this is getting into the weeds a little bit, but uh, so one of your potential policies or ordinance uh, changes was standards for bicycle parking. Um, I was thinking, so the cities have standard park amount of parking for vehicles for a business or different things like that. Mm -hmm. Is there at all examples that you have of bi required bicycle parking stalls per business? Yeah, yeah there are examples out there. That's something yeah. that we could provide. Um, I, the city of Madison has has ordinance regarding um, regarding the number of bicycle park. You know, and that's constantly evolving too. Um, you know, the demand for parking and and the right balance, more so with motor vehicle parking perhaps than bike parking, but um, there are examples that could be provided, yeah. Oh, cool. That's it for now. Andrew, I, I know you would ask me previously a question about bike boxes, Jeff. Oh. Um, yeah, but yeah I, feel free to jump in. Um, so with the Willie Street, John Nolan, I'm forgetting, that's like a five-way intersection. Yeah, Blair Street. With, uh, was just redone, and I, couldn't find the article after I talked to Doug, but um, I remember reading that they got rid of the bike boxes for a reason, because either they were confusing or they didn't work. And I noticed in here, bike boxes were recommended. And so I didn't know if that evolved, if you know a little bit more about that. I don't know what well, engineer was involved in that, but. Yeah, we were involved in the study of that intersection. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about the bike boxes being eliminated. That was another thing that evolved <laughs> throughout that project is, is where to place those. I do know that um, the the sort of core of that intersection has not been reconstructed. The city is doing the Willie Street leg and the Wilson Street leg, but mm -hmm. the middle is the US 151, and wow. Wistot has to re reconstruct that. So it could be that those bike boxes are on the Wistot portion. Um, okay. That's not to say that they won't be placed there, they, they still could be. Okay. Um, so I, we could talk a little more maybe offline, I'm not exactly sure. Um, about that, I, I yeah. heard that. And I know it's kind of getting down the road because design phase will figure all that out, but I just thought it was sure. interesting. Yeah, I think in general, the, the, the Madison you know, you know, feels like the bike boxes are well used when they're put in the right spot and people have, there's been enough of a period now where both the cyclists and the motor vehicles understand what they are. So mm -hmm. um, I think they're still a good concept. Yeah. Um, and then at least my final kind of comments right now to you would be, you know, thanks for the ad hoc committee and the members that are here and not here. Uh, and certainly I really appreciate the low cost, high impact recommendations as well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the high cost, high impact. Uh, so it was nice to look at all of those combined. That's it for now. Alder Thomas. Um, <clears throat> so I didn't write notes, but, but let me give you a couple of comments. First of all, because I'm defensive, I was at that two o'clock meeting. Mm -hmm. I will tell you what the council did. We moved to put parking back on Wanakur Road. 
We didn't have anything to do with the bump outs. We didn't redesign the road. But what we did do, <coughs> excuse me, engineers, we trusted the engineers that when we put the parking back in, they would make the road wide enough because we were redoing And they didn't. And nobody told us that. There were letters that went to the city engineer that said, you know, they wouldn't recommend it. The council never saw them. At least I didn't. And I don't know if you did, Doug, but I never saw them at the time. Yeah, I don't recall seeing it at the time. It was a letter from MSA. It was an engineer basically saying they weren't going to put their engineering stamp on it the way it was. Although they wrote the letter recommending that the driving lanes be done. Anyway, enough of that. But so, so those of you who think that the council redesigned the road, we didn't. We added parking back in on, on the west side of the road, and we took the bump pods out. So that's that. Having, so, I, so I am, you know, council, excuse me, because when it comes to all of this, I will be, I get skeptical about um, not asking enough questions, but I, first of all, I would feel more comfortable if this said proposal and not plan, because there are parts of it that are good and there are parts of it that I'm not crazy about. And as with everything, the devil is in the details. If we're going to do this, we have to maintain the sidewalks. And if we, are, if we truly care about safety, which I believe we do, we need to do a better job, I think, of enforcing speed. There aren't many cars going down one of these days, but I'll tell you they're going like a bat out of hell sometimes. They, they're not slowing down. So we need to enforce that. We need to do markings. We need to maintain this stuff. Um, and if the city decides that it, well, let me back up and say one other thing. This discussion reminds me very much of leaf burning, and I'm not sure if how many of you were around, but there was a time when this city, if you spoke against leaf burning, um, you, you know, you were, on, you were the, between the devil and the, you, people were not happy and people did not want they wanted the right to burn leaves. And you could see the city flipping so that they wanted to ban it, but it, but, but it was a community decision and it was a flip. And I, and I see this very much that way that people are, are, who didn't want sidewalks before, now are saying they want sidewalks. Some do not, I mean, I, I, will, I live on South Winnipeg. I will be impacted by this. Um, and I will tell you that I'm not opposed to it, and I'm not in favor of it because it will depend upon what the plan looks like and what it does there. The other thing in terms of enforcement that, you know, what are we going to do about, I have friends who live on Nona Drive. They have a lot of very fast bikers that don't use the bike lanes, they use the sidewalk. I'm not building, in my, my personal use, I'm not building a sidewalk for bikers. What are we going to do about enforcing that and keeping the bikers off the sidewalk? Because it's not safe for little kids or old people to be on there when there are bikers going whizzing by. So there's no sense in building them if we're not going to maintain them. And I don't mean five-year-olds and six-year-olds and kids can't, bikers can't be on the sidewalks. But I don't want the professional people who are trying to race their way around the lake down there. So I'm, I am concerned in what the commitment of this city council government is to speed enforcement, including the bikers who don't seem to think they have to stop at stop sites. So, so we have to commit to doing all of that, and that's what you need to hold us accountable to. So, uh, so I, I have, it, other than, I would prefer that we're a different word. I am, I am convinced that, that, that most of us believe that you take little steps and at each step we re-review and maybe then, you know, you send it back to Public Works or to, to the committee to look at some of the other proposals that are in here because there are options. It's not final decisions. Alder Moore. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to start by um, <coughs> thanking the ad hoc um, Ped Bike Committee 
Um, and I want to thank everyone who's written and appeared about the plan um, and or any elements reflected in it. Um, we really appreciate, truly appreciate an engaged constituency. Clearly this is one. Um, pro or con or anywhere in between um, when we're grappling with changes of any type in Monona. Um, I also want to thank those of you specifically who've sought out the facts rather than making assumptions or jumping to conclusions. Those of you that have offered constructive suggestions um, and or those of you who have called for calm as we grapple or debate. Change is hard. One of the things that I love about this community and council is being able to debate, have a difference of opinion without getting nasty with each other, without questioning each other's motives. We're better than trafficking in fake news. And I hope that never changes. My wish, and I know it's shared by everyone on this council, is that we'll keep respectfully listening to each other, offer constructive suggestions, recognizing that we may have differences of opinion, but we all share a love for the city. It honestly breaks my heart to hear so many of you say, well, I can't talk to my neighbor right now, or my relationship with my neighbor is strained over this. We're collective, we can collectively change that. It doesn't have to be. Having not been here for the first read, I just want to um, speak in four capacities, really. First, as a resident of 4505 Winnicott Road, within spitting distance, as they say, to our much beloved Schluter Park, Monona Motors, and the Ice Cream and Bait Shop. As a current chair of the Sustainability Committee, as a current chair of the Plan Commission, and as a member of the Transit Commission. First, as a resident, I ecstatically moved to Minona in 2007, having spent more than a decade before that driving up here regularly from Illinois to teach kayaking at Rutabaga. I know, compared to many of you, a newbie. In 2015, I renovated my tiny house <coughs> to improve energy efficiency and livability. <coughs> Post recognizing this community was meant to be my forever home. Among the many things that attracted me to the city was the tree canopy, that we are tree city, that my yard rolled to the street without a sidewalk, and that community members appeared comfortable strolling, biking, or running on the streets on the way to aforementioned landmarks or just about anywhere else. As a kid who grew up playing kickball in the street and riding her bike on residential streets, I was so impressed. To say that I'm not thrilled about the prospect of a sidewalk in my front yard cutting through the right of way is an understatement. I get it. I share and I indeed own the sentiment that several f folks have caught to, although I'd suggest not as many as perhaps should, surely not in my front yard. I also drive to an appointment in Sun Prairie early in the morning at least twice per week using Cold Spring where I'm creeping at no more than five miles per hour to the stoplight at Monona Drive dodging and squeezing through the line of parked cars and students as they go to school. Surely, I could argue, Cold Spring should be the first. It's more important. But here's the thing. It's not and can't be about me, or my property, or what I might prefer. It's about what's best for the community. Over the past 12 years, I've watched thousands of folks walk bike or jog by my house, increasingly younger families. Of course, it's a constant stream in the summer. I wish I had a clicker just yesterday. But despite lowering the speed limit permanently to 15 <coughs> miles an hour on my curve, adding signage by Winnequin Outlook as it turns towards Schluter, and occasional deployment of the radar speed apparatus, 
it's clear that the comfort and safety of strolling, jogging, or biking on the streets was and is just a ruse, just wishful thinking. The number of near misses, the number of times adults, kids, or dogs have to leap to the curb or lawn, and not just mine, is large and simply undeniable. So I don't like the prospect of a sidewalk. And as a conservationist by day, I don't like losing mature, healthy trees anywhere in the city. But surely, I would hate any person or pet of any age sustaining injury or worse as a result of the city's negligence in planning or lack of attention to safety. I don't think it's in anyone's interest to wait for tragedy or crash results before we acknowledge our responsibility. It is what it is. Now I want to speak as the chair of the Sustainability Commun and Plan Commission and member of the Transit Committee, which is less about safety and more about the big picture. A number of citizens have called out this bike bed plan <coughs> or the suggestions within it related to Winnaker Road as flying in the face of Monona's commitment to sustainability. Even going so far as to su suggest that this plan or council is promoting the deforestation of Monona. Science tells us that a healthy tree canopy, more trees, more open space, and less pavement are critical to addressing climate change. That's true. Video and minutes will reflect that I, among many others, have cautioned that we've paved paradise to put up a parking lot on many occasions. Heck, I've even hummed it. Worried that we're encouraging more driving with wider roads, a reality, more parking with bigger lots, another truth. Our sustainability plan and just about every other plan, <coughs> including the one before us, does acknowledge that science. The importance of our trees and the need to be careful in chewing up open space with more pavement, be it parking lots, bike lanes, or sidewalks. I'd add for those who are listening that even bigger single family homes, now seemingly a norm, subtract from our sustainability too. But even more prominently, far more prominently, in the general section, the land use section, and the transit section, the sustainability plan reflects that increasing the number of transportation choices, providing safe, multimodal, equitable means for individuals to commute, access schools, services, retail establishments, and the like has a greater positive impact on sustainability than the relatively small negative impact of losing a few trees. Greenhouse gas emissions from the transportation sector make up about 23% of total emissions in the United States. Choosing alternative and sustainable transportation options such as biking, walking, and taking public transit reduces the individual carbon footprint. Our data also shows us that folks won't stop driving their cars <coughs> unless they have multiple safe alternatives as largely reflected in this plan. In short, this plan does not fly in the face of our sustainability plan, but rather fully supports it, full stop. We have to reduce our use and reliance on fossil fuel cars. Finally, I'd also like to note that we're not, only def we're not only not deforesting, we're not even subtracting with respect to the number of trees in Monona. A few data points. The 2018 sustainability dashboard, which is on the website and I have right here, reflects that for every four trees we've lost on public property, for whatever reason, we've planted five. And, s and s many here might not know, you should also know that we reuse many of the trees that, we've had to, that have had to come down, making furniture, decking, and the likes for park and rec. As we speak tonight, the new riverfront development has added dozens of trees and more open space to what was before a largely impervious concrete blight. And the plan commission, as part of the landscape standards, is hyperactive in enforcing canopy tree requirements as part of the zoning code set as a function of the amount of parking proposed in any new development. There's been a lot of calls tonight 
to add, to slow down the acceptance of this plan. We hear you. But as evident from the current Winnequa design and appearances tonight, the city has been debating sidewalks, bike lanes, among other safety and convenience items for at least 15 to 20 years. I'd ask, isn't that long enough? There has also been many calls to add options to this plan before accepting it. Again, we appreciate them. But I assure you that the acceptance, as we all have, that the acceptance of this plan doesn't preclude any of these options. I'm confident the Public Works Committee and the Council has heard it all and will give, will give it all their due. I have no idea what specific plan will be for my yard for any part of Winnico Road or for any other road, none of us do since it hasn't been decided. What seems true, however, is that this plan is a worthy guide. It creates a worthy foundation for us to move slowly and smartly to get Monona where it needs to go. I'm also confident that the Public Works Committee, this council, the councils that follow us, and yes, the Monona residents that follow you, will make smart choices now and over many, many years that this long-range plan is intended to be a guide. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? All the court? Um, I'm going to make this brief because we've all been here quite a while. Um, I wanted to speak more to process than opposed to what's been said about the plan. Um, I just want to make it clear that this plan is non-binding. Um, if this plan is accepted tonight, it, um, it could be put on a shelf and we could never look at it again. If um, It's my hope that we don't do that. But there is nothing within this plan that says something <coughs> is for sure going to happen. All of you here tonight have done an excellent job in engaging in the civic process. Um, I am pleased with all of you showing up, and I hope that this is not your last meeting. It gets awfully lonely in here on <laughs> Monday nights. Um, and frankly, the room is a lot warmer tonight than it's usually. <laughs> um, so I am pleased that you're here. I hope you continue to show up here. Um, in terms of South Winnequa, there is no plan yet for South Winnequa. We are just in the conversation stages. I chair the Public Works Committee. Um, if you have ideas about South Winnequa, I encourage you to send them to me. If you have specific concerns about your property on South Winnequa, be it the grade of your driveway, be it a tree that's in your front yard, I encourage you to email me. Um, all of these things will be pulled together as we start the conversation about South Winnequa. Um, once we do have a plan um, developed by engineers, there will be public hearings for those um, to review that plan, which you will be able to attend and speak to. Um, the Public Works Committee will vote on that plan. It will then go to the City Council. The City Council will read the plan twice at Council meetings, which you can also attend like tonight, and give statements. Um, I just want to make it clear that, that you are not out of this process, um, that it is your duty as a citizen to be engaged in this process, and I do hope that you continue to be involved, whether you agree with what we do tonight or not. Um, if you don't agree, even more so, we need to hear from you. So it's my plea that, that, that the buck doesn't stop here, that, that you maintain your en engagement. Um, trust the process. Um, there's a reason it works this way. Um, all of us here are community members. I am a mother of two small children. Um, the blonde that was up here before, uh, the little four-year-old, that's mine. Um, <laughs> and uh, I feel strongly about Monona taking a step forward in terms of public safety. However that ends up looking, if it's sidewalks, if it's bike lanes, if it's signage, if it's redu reduction in speed, everything's on the table at this point. And we want to hear from you. Um, I've met with many of you, and I hope to meet with more of you. Um, please reach out to me via email, and I will be happy to sit down and have coffee with you. I love coffee. <laughs> um, and so I, I just 
I don't want you to just be discouraged with whatever may happen tonight. Um, I'm encouraging you to ma maintain your engagement within this process. So that's all I say. <coughs> Thank you. Andrew? All right, so I'm not as well spoken and I also have a cold, so I apologize. So I'll just read this. Um, so I grew up in Monona near Grand Park. I moved away uh, about five years, or moved away and then moved back five years ago. I live currently on Midmore near the bait shop. My wife and I, excuse me, walk our dog at least twice a day, which if you know my dog is quite the feat because he hates walking. Uh, I've been uh, brushed uh, at least one time uh, by a side mirror of a car while walking on North Winnequa. I try to stay off Winnequa, McKenna, and other streets because of traffic. I feel safe and love walking on the sidewalks on Dean and elsewhere. Now this is a plan that is looking at the whole city to tackle the mi tackling the mission of providing safe routes to schools, safe routes for bikes and pedestrians, no matter where. And by that I mean it's not taking into account at this current time gardens, walls, and other challenges such as trees. Uh, it's just analyzed and recommended how to make our city, resi city and residents, including as visitors, safe. This conversation has been ongoing since 2008, probably since 2006 at the council meeting, you know, vote, uh, and more formally since 2016. The thought that the city is rushing into anything, I believe, is simply not true. Why do we have to wait for an accident to make changes? I hope we all can understand that that is just not good policy making. You don't have to like everything in the plan uh, that the ad hoc committee unanimously recommended, but it's the start of a larger and longer conversation. Our action now as a council is to begin the process, a process that includes a few city committees that Jennifer and others uh, kind of laid out, which is comprised of residents, more public input, and I certainly heard from comments today and elsewhere and online, uh, the dissatisfaction with the listening sessions, so I think we can certainly do a better job of making those more fruitful. And then also future council considerations. All of this will be transparent because city meetings are always open to the public and open because that's what, how we have to be, and it's, it should be an open dialogue. This conversation can only be fruitful if led with facts and a calm demeanor. I support this plan because it's a start of an important process and discussion. Do I believe everything in this plan is perfect or do I uh, agree with everything that is recommended? No. I do believe this plan, which considers not just one or two streets, but the whole city, will improve our overall safety while increasing the appeal of Monona to current and future residents. I also believe there are several low-cost, high-impact options we can implement sooner rather than later. Finally, we, the council, are residents of Monona too. We live with you. Let's remember everybody, including us, wants to make Monona the best place to live, work, and play. Thank you. Alder Thomas. I just wanted to add, I appreciate Jen ask, encouraging you to keep in touch. And when you do, if you have notes or ideas, send them to all of us. And pay attention. I mean, you just. You know, there's a way that you can click on the city's website to get notified if there's a meeting and agendas. Pay attention to it. <coughs> Anyone else? Molly, did you have anything to add? Uh -oh. um, I guess just because I don't want to hear myself echoing on the YouTube channel, I will just say in brief um, that I echo this and support the sentiments of the other council members. Uh, who've spoken tonight uh, in support of the plan, uh, and I appreciate the efforts of all who participated in the formulation of this plan and those who lent their voices to this dialogue, both formally and informally, including everyone who is in attendance tonight. So thank you for your engagement, and, and as all of your core uh, recommended, please keep it up. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, then call the question all in favor say aye. 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 Molly did you? Aye. <laughs> all opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next up uh, on the agenda is new business item 2A consideration of resolution 19-8-2368 approving a bid for the purchase and installation of a refrigerated outdoor ice rink system at Riverfront Park put forth by the Parks and Recreation Director 
And this is started for immediate approval. Move to take this item out of order. Second. Could we, before we, could we have Jake explain why, why we, uh, why you wanted us to do it on the first? You wanted to explain that before we vote. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sure. The reason we asked this uh, item to be starred for one reading is simply a timing issue with the amount of time that it takes to custom build um, the ice equipment um, in order to be able to open Thanksgiving weekend, weekend before Thanksgiving, get it delivered, um, installed, and trained on. We had some challenges um, where we ended up doing the RFP, which is the request for proposal in-house. It took a little longer than I would have liked. Um, but we're really at that 11th hour to be able to get the equipment here to start our program um, in mid, mid to late November, which we'd like to do. Okay, all in favor of taking this out of order, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <laughs> Thank you, Molly. Is she opposed? No. She's, she's for. She okay, said I. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Okay, Jake. Sure, thank you. Um, during the first initial conceptual design of the park, ad hoc committee, park and recreation board uh, discussion about the new park at Riverfront, there was always talk of having a winter um, ice skating rink at the facility. Um, as a destination spot for people to visit and to support the local businesses. Um, during all of those committees, it was recommended that we go through a refrigerated ice rink, um, so much so that the design of the park included uh, underground piping for um, the chiller unit, the supply and return lines, and the grading of kind of the great lawn area. So this is the last piece of seeing our, um, our dream turned into a reality for this park project. Uh, the RFP process resulted in four competitive bids, um, which is really, a, I think, a great uh, spread of what we would look for when we're looking at purchasing of um, a custom project. Um, the apparent low bidder of custom ice um, was uh, informative and helped as kind of a customary or a, a pro bono almost during some of our design questions that we had with our um, consultant and contractor. Um, the references that they've <coughs> done their work with came back extremely positive and favorable to um, what we we're looking at. The efficiency of the style of the tubing that goes into keeping the refrigerant is uh, uh, much more uh, maintenance friendly than some of the other um, specifications and proposals that we receive. So I'm confident and comfortable recommending that we approve the contract with the apparent low bidder um, at this point. Questions, Alder Wood? Just, uh, more a comment from uh, finance and personnel. I'd ask Mark uh, Hotaker if any of the costs of this are TIF eligible, and he indicated it's still being reviewed, but it's possible that at least some of it will be TIF eligible. Um, the only other thing I would add is, and not to put pressure on you, Jake, but I think. You know, when this was originally proposed, I was very skeptical about it and supported my confidence in you that you will follow through and do the things that you talked about and make it a really great um, feature of the park, great attraction for Monona is why I'm, how I sort of came around to supporting it, so. Thank you, Alderwood, and I would expect everyone in this room should have that same sort of, um, demand of me and my department that we provide those services to our community and our, our residents. I am extremely confident in the ability of our department to um, put on an amazing um, program. We already have basically our whole program lined up for this first initial ice skating season with special events, holiday tree lightings, um, skating with Santa, a, a lot of different events that are just going to bring a lot of uh, activity. Um, the the technical part of it uh, is similar to what we do at the outdoor pool, so I, I do think we'll be, um, I think we're set up for success, and I'm expecting it. So Anyone else? <laughs> so, will the, and so will the bank. <coughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Is anyone else? Excited. No? Yeah, looking forward to it. Okay, uh, if there are no further questions, will the clerk please call the roll? 
Alder Thomas. Aye. Alder Groovy. Aye. Alder Moore. Aye. Alder Kitzler. Aye. Alder Wood. Aye. Alder Court. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next item to be also uh, start for immediate action consideration of resolution 19 8 2369 approving the purchase of an ice resurfacing machine also put forth by the Parks and Recreation Director. Is there a motion to take this out of order? Move to take this item out of order. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Second. Sure. So a dedicated ice resurfacing machine uh, is needed to keep the condition of the ice in extremely good skating form, add in water, shaving high spots. Um, very customary for a refrigerated ice rink to have a piece of equipment like this. Um, we had looked at the alternative of having a, a tractor mounted piece of equipment um, due to the size constraints of our utility storage room. The addition of the stairwell from the coffee shop, it's going to make that turning radius really tight into the section of the park, if you're familiar with what I'm talking about. Um, and so this dedicated unit will be able to make kind of that turn um, a lot easier um, than what the alternative would be. Um, this <coughs> type of smaller Zamboni, so Zamboni, if you know, is a kind of a brand name for an ice resurfacing unit. Um, will also allow us to have some branding to it. So we'd be looking with the support of the council, some sponsorship of the actual Zamboni. Um, if you've been to an NHL game, some of the most fascinating part of hockey is watching the Zamboni um, <coughs> <coughs> clean the ice and see some of the um, sponsorship. So there is some potential for additional revenue for the ice rink. Um, lead time is quite a ways out on this. Uh, talking with the company, they would do every effort to get it here in time for the ice skating season, which is why we have it start for one read. Questions, Andrew? What's the lifespan of a piece yeah. of equipment like this? So this one, well maintained, they say between 10 and 15 years. So it's a, the options we have is a lithium battery um, option to it, which will last a lot longer. Uh, <coughs> charging it um, <coughs> you know, as much as you can, it will be in a heated indoor space. Uh, so really what's probably would be the challenge with this is the batteries. So the, the actual piece of equipment is going to last a long time. It'll be if we new technology emerges and you know, the lithium battery becomes obsolete in 10 years. Might be a different method of um, using it. But so, Alder Thomas? So how expensive are the batteries? Uh, the battery upgrade package that we have is like a, a $4,000. So it's probably looking at three to four thousand, which is similar to like if we're looking at our electric, you know, vehicle replacement of the batteries. Okay. So the the machine itself has a longer lifespan. You told me twenty earlier. Yeah, I fifteen to twenty. I just it's one of those where it's like it's like a boiler <laughs> at the community center. Don't say that. Should last yeah. twenty twenty years but if at 10 years I come back and you say but Jake you said it was gonna last 20 I, I years. I won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> well I think she was saying the vehicle or whatever you want to call it piece of equipment will last 20 years but we'll have to replace the battery. Correct we may have to replace the correct that is yeah. correct that Which I think is that's a lot cheaper than replacing the whole. Yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah. Oh, well and I would also think I, I mean again I'm not trying to put words in your mouth but I would also think since it's not something that's being used year-round Correct. That would extend not only the life of the machine, but potentially the battery if we take care of it correctly. As somebody who runs a bunch of battery operated stuff, right? Correct. I mean, it's not sitting. I mean, if you, you know, it's kind of a cream puff. It's only being used four months, five months out of the year, right? And how many, maybe you said this in your exclamation, my mind's kind of fried here. Um, how, didn't you say in finance and personnel, you'd probably be using it three or four times a day? Correct. Yep, but still over, you know, it'll be in pretty good condition as far as being stored in heated garage and having, you know, maintenance done on it regularly. I, I don't see it as being an issue. Alder Kitzler <coughs> and then Alder Moore. Sorry, uh, and I know we asked this similar question in finance and personnel, but with the storage facility that we have there and your need to store all of the rink equipment as well as the ice resurfacer, there's enough space there to not worry about storage. 
Yeah, so the resurfacer will fit fine in our storage unit itself. The rink equipment on the off season, spring, summer will be stored off site. Oh, okay. A city site or? Uh, no, we do have a, a developer that will be um, sponsoring the storage of oh. it. Oh, okay. All right. more? No, good. Anyone else? Oh, I know what I was going to ask. <laughs> I just wrote. So, is the um, recognizing that this is a new type of machine? Do you? Uh, or, uh, is the maintenance similar to any other fleet or vehicle that you're used to, or are we anticipating higher maintenance costs? Um, from my talks with people that have dealt with these before, mm -hmm. um, they're dealing with the larger ones that have some more complicated parts to it. Um, it's a fairly basic system. Uh, we will get trained on it, and I do believe we probably have one of the best mechanics in Dane County that works for the city um, that can work on anything. So I, I don't think it's any different than like one of our mowers, for example. Okay. Anyone else? Molly, did you have any questions? No. Okay. Anyone? Okay, will the clerk please call the roll? Father Coor. Aye. Father Thomas. Aye. Father Groupie. Aye. Alder Moore. Aye. Father Kitzler. Aye. Father Wood. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next is reports of committees, commissions, etc. Alder Thomas. <coughs> Alder Coor. On Saturday, we had an absolutely fantastic mound dedication event. Thank you to the mayor for speaking. Um, we had almost 60 people show up. Um, I want to thank the library for all of their support in helping set up and take down and transition and AV. Um, Will with community media for taping and live streaming. And um, Doug Palman from the planning department um, for all of his support um, coming in on a Saturday. And, uh, yeah, it was fantastic. Hollywood? I would second that. I really, um, was really happy with the way it went. In particular, the speakers from the tribe were very uh, poignant. Other than that, Parks Board, we're meeting next week. We're doing a, a bike tour. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. That's what yeah. I meant to say, because that's the 20th. That's when the meeting is. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> that's it. Okay, Alder Groupie, did you have any news? Um, just to note that the senior committee will meet next Tuesday, the 27th at 4.30, just to review some capital budget items. And it's an open meeting as always if others are interested in attending. All right. Uh, Alder Kitzler. Um, Doug stole one of mine, and then the other one is tourism applications are now out. So if you know anybody who will get heads in beds, if you will, um, whether it's an event, whether it's programming, whether it's, uh, I guess, event and programming is the same thing, um, or publicity or different things like that, feel free to uh, send them Brian's way, and then Brian will send them the full application. So the timeline is applications are open now. Uh, they will close October 1st, and then we are meeting sometime mid-October to review and assign the funds. And we have about $48,000 to give out this year, which is pretty sizable. And then years in the future will be 90000 and above. So we're going to get into some uh, larger amounts of money to give away. So that said, uh, feel free to send your ideas anywhere to Brian or myself, and we'll get applications out. Alder Moore. Um, we had uh, successfully had triple header. Last week in Monona with the National Night Out and our first uh, sustainability showcase coupled with the concert. Uh, and I just want to thank uh, three members of the sustainability committee, Teresa, um, Dan, and Mark Buffett uh, for, for their um, leadership of that event as well as Brad <coughs> from the city. and. Missy and Jake and uh, and the, the police department, Monona Police Department, all of whom played well together in, in uh, Winnicott Park in pulling off a triple header. And um, I think it was a huge success. We had arguably uh, the most interest in uh, the 
advanced Tesla that with the uh, Batman doors um, uh, that that uh, a friend of ours brought in. But uh, it was I, I think uh, we got some good interest and really appreciate. Had some new community members join us, uh, and uh, and as a first uh, showcase, I think it went off very well. And I want to thank everybody for that. <coughs> Jake, did you have any? Just quickly, as long as I'm here. Uh, <laughs> our <laughs> <laughs> Our uh, August beer garden is next Thursday, August 29th at Schluter Park. Performing will be Lo Marie, so Lauren Homburg. So don't miss that one. Uh, on that note, you might want to change the date on the sign on the corner side. Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, Still has July. The keys <laughs> are uh, misplaced at this point oh. to change the lettering. So we are efforting <laughs> my office to find oh, the one set of keys that opens up the message board without breaking the locks. Um, thanks, all this Sorry. stuff for <laughs> making me have to say that. Our parks board meeting tomorrow is going to be a bike tour, so if anyone would like to follow along in bike or vehicle, we will be ending at Riverfront um, for <coughs> kind of a sneak preview of the almost finished uh, park um, and stopping, starting at Stonebridge and kind of stopping at some of our park projects and maybe future potential park projects. Um, save the date right now for Sunday, October 6th on your calendars from 1 to 3. Details will come, but we would like your presence um, can I say, as a community to unveil um, the new Riverfront Park. And if you do get a chance to stop down there, start thinking of a potential name. We do have a recommendation from the Parks Board, but I would like to hear the comments, or at least now that we're close to being finished. Um, if anything else strikes or comes to your mind. So we can What's the name? Uh, there was a recommendation for Four Lakes Crossing from the Parks and Recreation Board. However, I think there may be some um, buyer's remorse maybe on that, and <coughs> uh, I think there may be, a, maybe not. Maybe pushback from developer. Some pushback from other people over Sorry. that potential That's name where um, it may get revisited, or may, that may be our official recommendation to this board. Don't know yet. That's all I have. Is that all? Thank and you. my understanding is that former Mayor Miller will be here for the grand opening event on October 6th. So. That is correct. <laughs> Joan? Uh, my car is packed. I'll be leaving for Middleton tonight. And, uh, <laughs> And I'll be there all week for the Wisconsin Municipal Clerks Association Woo conference. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, you get to go to the hot spots. They're ready. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm on the kind of <coughs> maybe this year, so I'll be doing um, some more hands on with the uh, organization. So I'm excited. Okay, and Brian? Just uh, real briefly, an uh, update on the budget. Uh, staff continues to work on the 2020 budget. Uh, right now we're focused on capital, so staff and the mayor uh, will be meeting with department heads on their capital requests, uh, and then we will get a schedule to the full council on the upcoming committee of the whole meetings that we'll be having in September and October, and kind of lay out the whole plan for this upcoming budget cycle. And our first capital budget meeting with staff is this Wednesday. Um, uh, okay, I just had a couple things. Um, first of all, uh, keep in mind that our next meeting is Tuesday, um, September 3rd, because of the Labor Day holiday. Um, tomorrow is the one-year anniversary of the deluge that caused the flood, so that's kind of on my mind these days. Um, I, I, I would like to compliment the Landmarks Commission on the, the mound dedication ceremony. It was very nice, and I was really impressed with the number of people who were here. It was really, they must, what were there, 50 or something, or 40 or 50? Probably 60. Yeah, 60. So right. Rick Bernstein did a yeoman's work on that, helping to put it together and get the speakers. He even That's wrote my remarks. Yes. Most part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he was giving our thanks. Um, and the only other thing related to landmarks, and correct me if I'm wrong, but is there going to be a presentation about that architectural yes. survey? Thank you. The 28th, um, so next Wednesday, there's a presentation on the um, architectural uh, survey. Um, invitations were sent out to property owners who have um, properties that may be eligible for um, National Register designation. Um, but it's an open to the public meeting. Anyone can come and attend. It is strictly informational. You are not making a commitment by attending. And that's at the community center? Yes. At 7? Yes. Okay. Um, 
I guess that's all I had for news. Uh, we have one appointment tonight, Jordan Stewart to the Tourism Commission, effective immediately through April 2020. He is the new manager of the Abbott Hotel, and he'll be coming from Hilton in downtown Madison. Move to my approve. Understanding. Oops, sorry. So you move to approve? Move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Mm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you, Molly. Motion passes. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Oh. Thanks, Molly. Enjoy the rest of your vacation. We are adjourned. Oh.